And we are coming down in three, two, one. Welcome to Getting Sports with Drunk. I'm your hostess, Cupcake the Riddler, and I'm joined by Mark. Sheen Washable. Ooh, Mark. Oh, I, was, I wasn't ready was for that. Was I not Turn out? Turn the headphones up. What's the matter? You, you're swapping mics on me. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was coming over here. I'm Mark. I'm Toothpick Souls. <sighs> I'm Cotton Picking Souls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, special, we have special guests. Sorry. The, the whole thing screwed me up. We have a special guest today we have, uh, from from the Chaz and AJ show. That's right. Uh, Phil. Hello. I don't know if you want to come up with a fancy name. <laughs> Actually, I'll stick with Phil. Phil works. Yeah. Turn up five. Souls had a name for him. Oh, I'm boy. All, I, <laughs> I've only got audio on my right ear. Those but headphones do that sometimes. That's fine with me. They, they're, they're only on I for the intro. I got it. Keep going. Well, Kyle. So, Souls got the, the nickname break? for him. 30 minutes till game time. There's only one move you should make. Toothpick. <laughs> Kyle. What? To, you said you had a name for Phil. I don't, though. I never said that. <laughs> so we, we, we went to the liquor store beforehand, and he goes, hey, we're going to call him Phil Nye, the science guy. Oh, okay. It's not really like a name, though. Was <laughs> we, 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 Phil had, Nye. we had this whole discussion, and like he was all excited about it. And no, then it he... wasn't, though. I also got thrown off by Gruden in the background. This is a great start. I love when the show fights with each other. <laughs> Where's that coming from? It's I Coach Gruden. Yeah, Gruden. John's, oh, John's oh, hanging oh. out. I don't know where that's going from. Turn so, up uh, four. Before we get into like the starting lineup and stuff, I just want it to be test known. Test one, two, test one, until two. We, in, until uh, the, the game the four? is yeah. described four. after all the is the game up stuff four? Yeah. and all that, everyone needs to be extremely observant of everything said and done in the studio. Oh, You'll understand why when we talk about the game. Are we allowed to swear after oh, I swear? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We pay for that, Phil. I'm asking because... Uh, uh, I don't, Let want, it I don't run. want to be the person that... We pay royalties too, right, Peter? Yes, we do. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who uh, brought the bell? Uh, it's Kendall's bell. I brought it for a show. We, we brought it for a sh- uh, game that we played last week. Can I, can I say something? Yes. I am now a fan of NASCAR. <laughs> NASCAR or ra- uh, no, crashes? No, NASCAR. Oh, okay. And you know why? Why? Because we were in Chili's yesterday. I wish I could see your face, Phil. We were in Chili's last night, and I'm watching it, and that fucking race, that, that crash... Daytona? Oh, yeah. 20 cars, right? I'm like, here's the, the anniver- here's the anniversary of, what's his name, Dying. And there's they got a 25-car crash pileup. Not one red flag, two. <laughs> yeah, but you know who was in the Silverado that led the led the charge beforehand? Dale Earnhardt Jr. and David Poitnoy from Barstool Sports. <laughs> and I, I feel <laughs> I like the whole there. entitlement thing is carrying over to NASCAR because why do we have Toyotas in there? <laughs> This, Toyotas in Florida don't match, bro. Because Toyo- Toyota <laughs> like is the Nike. I behind on that. It's the <laughs> Nike of cars. <laughs> My first week watching it. It's, a... it's, the, it's the Nike of cars. It's everywhere. And now they have Mustangs, too, right? Or they've always had them. I, they, I couldn't tell you. Huh? Well, don't they alternate? Miss, you have a microphone, you know? I know. They're new this year. Observant. Her mic's off. Be observant. <laughs> Pull your mic bro. towards your mouth there. Put that big black thing right near your mouth. So many, so many. Don't great, pull it out. So many Yanked great things right happen every out. week. <laughs> so many pulls it. I can't wait. All right, it's starting un- lineups. <laughs> starting lineups. Phil, would you like yeah. to lead it off? Did you bring a beer? I did bring a beer. I oh. brought a couple of different beers because uh, I, I watched. Ooh, that's uh, a mock favorite. I, <laughs> I watched the beginnings of a couple of these podcasts, and I heard that if you don't bring your own beer, you just get shitty beer. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I'm not. I'm not yeah. going to deal with that. So I, I have uh, a New England Brewing standard. I feel for the state of Connecticut. Uh, I got the double fuzzy can release, their hey. most recent. So I brought one of those. Nice. Say, he's right. got a, he's got a nice voice for radio. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me moist. I think it's just when do okay. we start clapping after every beer? I don't double know. Fuzzy. You know what it is? It's because Phil's here. So everybody's double like, <laughs> Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> golf clap for everything. <laughs> I would support the golf clap. Yeah. I like that. Peter, do you have a beer? No, I need one. Though. There's like nine in there. We drank your October. I'm sorry. I have to replace it. No, that was I brought that for that whoever to drink. Okay, because everybody's like we, uh, everybody forgot their beer last week because it was after the snowstorm. Long, long story. And they're short. like, well, fucking sports guys drink our shit every week. Fuck them. 
What? That's no. not true. The only beer we ever drink are the Miller 64s, and that's because Kendall replaces them. <laughs> he bought it once. He I bought it twice. <laughs> what, twice? Yeah, so I brought, not that it matters. Actually, between long one story and two, short, that was, uh, we, we that was a, a gift for Nevada's. somebody <laughs> that... That was a gift. For, there was like two cases of that. It was a gift for somebody that gave up drinking. I, thought, I heard so. you guys were taking the boss out for a, for his birthday. That's right. Is that true? It's That's a, a plan. A, a brewery of your choice. I wasn't made aware of that. Should we go to Thimble Island? Thimble Island's good. We should Our go friends. when it's warm, though. Definitely. That's a warm place. It's a good scenic place. Because they have a lot of outdoor. The, the, it's very small inside. A lot I've of outdoor. It's got a lot of outdoor things going on. You know, you get the. My birthday's in March, though. That's too far away. Warm. March what? Sixteenth. Fifteen days before mine. Day before St. Patrick's Day. I'll probably have to go get audio that night too. <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn hey, right you will. Jeff, happy birthday. Go give me audio. <laughs> Goddamn right you will. <laughs> Machine. I have from Alchemist Brewing in Vermont a Heady Topper IPA. Fantastic choice. I'll go get one up right. He didn't buy it. Are we, are we getting rid of the golf clap or? No, we'll get, we'll okay. no. <laughs> it, it, here and there. Salt. Yeah. I got from uh, Beard Brewing. You like the juice? Beard is good. I like the the action. Where's it from, Kyle? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Who cares? Going on four thousand seven hundred eighty-seven shows recorded. Still has no freaking clue how to read a can. Yeah. <laughs> Stonington, Connecticut. Just saw it. Where in Connecticut? Stonington, I said. I oh, can't good drink. for you. I'm glad you knew that. Now I can't drink beer with you, beer huggers. Always fucking IPAs and. What do you want? You want a stout? I got a stout. I want a fucking PBR. I don't have that. Uh, is there any more uh, Coors Light in there? <laughs> I'm back on my diet. Genesee I want Cream. Oh. Ooh, Jenny Cream. <laughs> you can get a Genesee Cream. It's on. It's in the door. You might like it. You ever had Genesee Cream? No, my diet. Imagine, uh, so imagine you drink half of an IBC cream soda and then you diarrhea it full. Yeah. <laughs> and then drink the rest of it. You gotta, but, eat, you gotta drink it with a garbage plate, though. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the proper way to do it. My okay. doctor uh, set me free for a little bit. He's like, relax, calm down. My AFib went away, so. Oh, good. Went away. That's, for now. That's his way of saying I'm not going to really check on it. <laughs> <laughs> for now, it went away. So. Get this guy a sausage pizza stat. Yeah. <laughs> fucking Rip. stem and some chore boy. Rip Baron? <laughs> from New England Brewing Company. From the Riddler Collection. Imperial Stout Trooper. Fantastic. Another favorite of mine. The Riddler Collection is something that uh, Paul here has put together, assembled a lot of beer over the years, and... <laughs> I seem to be the only one taking from the Riddler collection. Well, it's because it's in your bedroom. That's you, true. You didn't put the on-air light on. You're right. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, I have from Stone Brewing. He got a magnum. From uh, <laughs> the Berlin Groundbreaking Collaborations uh, series, the 1.5 liter uh, Super Magic Woot Stout. So it's a Woot Stout. I'll just read the description. I'm a beer Ale bottle, with hazelnuts, and pecans, and almonds aged in whiskey barrels in Berlin. It is one quart, one pint, and two point seven fluid ounces. Why is uh, Will Wheaton's name on that bottle? He he created it. That's awesome. Will, Will Wheaton, Wheaton, Greg Coach, Wheaton. and Drew Curtis are the creators of the Stone Woods Stout. No kidding. Mm-hmm. They are. They are. There's one. One of the bottles they did has Will Wheaton in a uh, Starfleet uniform on the bottle. Toast of excellence. And I have a uh, Oktoberfest now. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Not even open. No. Oh. Does anybody have a toast of excellence? Yeah. I don't open it yet. No, I'll go, I'll go first. We open it after the toast. Oh, my bad. I fucked up. Sorry, right. I, I couldn't stop you. That, you already started. That's the whole cowbell thing all over again, Phil. <laughs> you're, you're Premature you're opening. So my toast of excellence is to Bruce Bochy. He retired today from coaching with the San Francisco Giants. I thought he's going to finish the season. Isn't he going to do this upcoming yeah, season? I'm pretty sure I also heard that. Whatever. I he think he's, he announced his retirement, but he's going to do it at the end of this. He just anna- Why would he announce his retirement before, right before spring training? Like, because hey, fuck you guys. That's how you do it now, because now you got to get all the gifts. Right? <laughs> you go like, you got to do the Derek Jeter the farewell tour. tour. Or the, De- the David Ortiz tour. No, 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 no. I meant, like, why would he retire right now? <laughs> oh, why not? <laughs> really make the Giants have to find a new coach right away. <laughs> that's the way to do it. Oh shit! We really, really, really put a big X on that team for Harper <laughs> if he retires right now. <laughs> Crazier shits happen. True, Machine. My toast is to the NBA All Star Game. I, I didn't watch the whole game, but a lot of the highlights were pretty good. <laughs> like, Some of the highlights watch, were good. You watch it on Instagram, like exactly. what, Curry dumping. Yep, or dunking. <laughs> Those plays. <were> so <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. Like that's all the NBA All Star Game is to me. It's just the ridiculous. You know, alley oops and dunks and whatnot. No and, uh, one's no one's playing defense in that game. Is it the only professional league that does the All Star game correctly? What does that mean? Yeah, what do you mean? 
like I feel like NBA fans actually want to watch the NBA All Star Game. Hmm. Like I don't know if football fans really give a shit about the Pro Bowl. No, no, no. no, no. no. I don't no MLB think... fans want to watch the MLB All Star Game. I think they are more interested in the Home Run Derby. No, because the MLB All Star Game has implications that not matter anymore. to teams. Of... Not anymore. Yeah, oh, when did they get rid of that? Last, last season, years? I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Last year, oh, so now it's meaningless. Just, just in time for it to not just mean in time anything. for it to be yeah. meaningless. I mean, I still think people like the game. I mean, the, here's the deal. I mean, you go to any NBA game, NHL game. It's all timed. I mean, yeah, like they can go longer or shorter depending on penalties and stopped calls and stuff like that. But like the All Star games don't have a lot of fouls called. And things like that. Whereas, I mean, in the MLB, it goes as long as it takes. Foot- yeah. Football has got a tough deal with the Pro Bowl because a big part of football is you want to see these big hits. You want to see these great defensive plays. But nobody wants to get hurt. Yeah. No one wants to lose a paycheck going into next the season The Pro Bowl is for the players. It's not for the fans. I agree. And the, the sooner that fans can realize that and stop shitting all over it because, you know, these guys, you know, I understand they make millions of dollars and blah, 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 blah and this and all that. But at the end of the day, they played a 16-game season. If they made the playoffs, great for them. That's just but the regular they, season. Then they get to go out and they get to have fun. All that other shit. They get to go out and have fun with their – because their, their, they're all friends with other t- players on other teams. They don't get to see them. That happens all the time. You get players, two members of the Chicago Bears, for example, and one doesn't re-sign and ends up going to play for the Kansas City Chiefs. He's going to see them once every four years during the season. So they get a chance to – Rekindle things. I, I like the Pro Bowl because it's it's for them. You get to have fun with it. So my, my original question. I think do you, do I you think, think the NBA All Star Game is the best of the major sports. No, NHL All Star Game is the actual All Star Game. Yeah, because it's another game. Like because uh, you get three you get three games. You get you get three games kind of. You get I, I, you they get three, changed it recently. You get three super well. Even before they changed it, you still got one long game of all high scoring affairs. I mean the la- the season the last season of the NHL All Star Game, the final score was thirty three to twenty nine. Okay, so exactly my point with the NBA is you want to see all kinds of scoring. You want to see dunks. You want to see these crazy alley-oops. You want to see the three-point, you know, Dirk Nowitzki, whatever, going crazy. Right. You want to see all that. In hockey, sometimes you want to see a, a great goaltender come in and just stand on his head. But and they like, do you, that still. That's the thing. For a short period of time. Yeah, but I mean, but you're also going up. The score up at the end, let's be honest, is still like 13 to 12. That's not going to happen in the regular season very often. Right, but you're also, if you have... Henrik Lundqvist and goal going up against the Pittsburgh Penguins, you're facing three elite shot takers on the ice versus 14. Mm. So it doesn't matter how good you are. You're still going to be facing 14 guys that know how to put the puck at any spot they want to on the net. And you're still just you. It's not like you, because it's not like you have another two goalies to help you. So in the that. NBA all-star game, they don't play defense because they don't want people getting hurt. And s- s- same thing sort of with the NHL with like, you have to have defensemen on the ice, but like no one's going to dive in front of a puck. No, they still the they still dive in front of the puck. <laughs> They're all psychopaths. No, they dive in front of the puck. <laughs> the only thing they don't do is they just don't lay out big hits. They still hit each other, but they just don't lay out and they don't they don't get in fights and they don't just they don't charge people. Yeah. But they still hit people. And the defenseman, the thing with the NHL versus like the NBA is every defenseman has to be offensive oriented, whereas in the NBA you can be a defensive player and not be offensive oriented. We've seen it time and again from players. There's look at Ben Wallace, Dennis Rodman. You look at players like that that were just defensive giants that were had some good offensive games, but not very rarely. They were on the court to beat DeAndre Jordan. He's on the court to be a defensive player only. That's his job. In hockey, you can't like you still get assists. You still have to be able to shoot the gaps and all that stuff. So I, I you think have to hockey, create plays that create scoring I think chances. The, I think the NHL also game is most exciting. Uh, mine's to just oh well, Peter. Do you have one? I kind of like skipped over people. All star game now. No, do you have a, a toast, toast of excellence? A toast of excellence? Um, Something sports related? Way, way to prepare. Or oh, yourself uh, related? It's my first time here. So. <laughs> <laughs> you live here. <laughs> 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 we well, he hasn't been here for the past two weeks. I do have a toast of... I, I have a toast for the people that clean up that mess on that track yesterday. Twice. Not just once, twice. Right, that's fair. They sports. had two red flags in one race that... I mean, I haven't been watching it much, but... Or very long, but... Must have won the first challenge. <laughs> 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 Actually, I was there Worked. eight years ago for the, what they, they call it two days before the actual race. They call it the Mountain Dew. Um, what do they call it? It's not even called qualifications. It's the Mountain Dew shoot off or something. And these car, the cars, they, they go against each other prior to the, the Daytona 500 is like a week long process before the actual race. And to, to be down there and see that shit. It's I a ceremony. A it's a that. kickoff to the yeah. whole season and all that. And and being there, hearing that, because it's like really quiet, and all of a sudden there they are coming around the fucking corner. Like people don't understand. 
uh, NASCAR until you're actually there. And then you hear that rumbling of like fucking bumblebees coming around. <laughs> it's, I used to make fun of people that liked uh, NASCAR, but not anymore. So here's yeah. to everybody who's a NASCAR fan. With your fed up face, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, your I mean, one contribution to the podcast so far has been the Daytona 500. <laughs> so, you know. I'm a cowboy fan too. <laughs> Fill the other one. A toast of excellence, yes. Uh, we have to shout out Cameron Young. Quinnipiac Sr., anyone see this kid? Nope. 55 <laughs> points, triple overtime. Phil brought notes. I did. I prepared. I texted Kendall. I'm like, what are we doing? Like, I need to know. I don't want to look like a goofball. Hey, listen, I don't want to look like Pete over here. Have you heard the show? <laughs> He's the most prepared guy tonight. <laughs> we tried to do a segment once, like, for a period of time for, like, a local sports person. But then there was, like, six straight weeks of, like, everyone being very below average. Yeah. And we were just kind of like, all right. Like, no, like, this is a toast of excellence to Cameron Young, Quinnipiac Sr., 55 points and a triple overtime win over Sienna. Uh, Sienna, by the way, overcame a 20-point deficit in the second half just to tie the game. So it gave him an opportunity in the three opportunities. He scored 19 points, Cameron Young did, in just the overtime periods to help them win this game. Uh, it's a MAC record. It's a Quinnipiac record. It's the highest total in NCAA Division One basketball so far this season. Cameron Young, toast of excellence. All right. Wow, the passion. <laughs> my parents. Mine is to uh, my San Diego fleet from the AAF. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you saw it. Well, they my, have. My they have terrible. They have fans already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, quarterback Mike Bergovici looked it up. Uh, <laughs> He was flushed out to the left. Spell that without looking. Oh, impossible. <laughs> impossible. Bugabucci? I don't even know if I pronounced it right. <laughs> I'm uh, certain you did. B-U-G-A-B-U-C-C-I. Uh, yes. No. I, <laughs> flushed out to the left. Under pressure. Turned around. Throws the ball over his head backwards. The no-look pass. I com- did see that. Completed it. Completed it. For that first was time. unreal. Yeah. So... Good, you know, sometimes luck is better than being good, you know. <laughs> hey, so. Eli Manning made a career on that. Yeah, ooh, my <laughs> comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, my, uh, John. <laughs> mine's just a Dirk. I'm just, I don't know, watching the All-Star Weekend. For whatever reason, this retirement in the NBA, this hurts me so much more than all the other ones. Is he, is he officially Dirk? retired? Yeah, this yeah. is his last year. Yeah. That's why him and Wade got put into yeah. the All-Star game. But, like, this just hurts me so much more than, like, Kobe did and, like, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett. Like, those were all – I was all fans of those players, but – and I didn't really, like, expect Dirk, but it just hurts. It's like a real good, like, warm-up for when Vince calls it quits. (laughs) That's going to hurt. That one's going to really suck. I might cry. It's going to be in the pelvis. I'll be placed forever. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Guy who'll be like fifty five years old, still suiting up. <laughs> See, I I don't want him to. Re- I want him to announce his retirement that he's gonna play the rest of the season and then retire, because I want him to like not not go in the dunk contest, but like I want him to like like Adam Silver to put him in like the All Star game, like he did with Dirk and like Wade. Yeah, and I, I want to like I want to see like everyone just move out of the way and just let him try <laughs> something one more time. Like if he because if he get like forty five can jack up like a between the legs dunk, I'll be all about it. <laughs> That'd be the greatest moment in my life. As many people have called him just a genetic freak of nature. He's he just hit the genetic me. lottery. He's so I think if anyone could do that at 45, it's Vince. It's insanity. That guy's amazing. But Dirk, love him. Guy came off the bench, drilled like two, like 35 foot threes. <laughs> I think it was <laughs> three. He had three in like less than two minutes. Oh, Dirk I also wanted to put Steph Curry in my toast of excellence because um, I don't know if anybody caught the like a uh, mic'd up version of him in the All-Star game. Garden Clay? Not just Garden Clay, but just talking <laughs> trash to people. It was hilarious. <laughs> like, he he tried to, he set a screen on, like, Kevin Durant and then moved, so Kevin Durant fell. <laughs> and then he was just like, no wonder we lose games. <laughs> it, was, it was just funny. Like, he was just being such an asshole, and I loved it. Good for him. Good for him. Big part of basketball trash talk. I love it. <laughs> All right, you open your beers. I, I, I jumped the gun. I apologize. There we go. All right. Mock really loves that. <laughs> if you're listening, there's oh, also a live chat. We got a pop chat. coming. We got a pop coming. Ooh. Wow. If you're listening, there's a live chat in YouTube, by the way. Yeah. Give it Talk a chat. To us. There's three people in there already, so. Let us know. Give it a chat. Be an Emma and a Mamsie of the sports show. <laughs>
Tell us we're wrong, because we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, right. the, the chat room is there for you to tell us to talk shit. Yeah. Who's, got, who's got the funnel? <laughs> <laughs> I like that you brought your post drink too. <laughs> What does it taste like? Heaven. <laughs> I feel like that'd just be exhausting to drink out of. <laughs> I know, right? It's a good workout. Burns off part of the calories. Where's your grill and everything? You look like something that you're out of a rap video. What? That they bottle looks like... They don't drink, drink beer. <laughs> Mom, Heineken, and Red Stripe. <laughs> it's the Carl. poor man's Hennessy. Right <laughs> I, I feel like that bottle's a defense mechanism. Like, if, bottle, when you drink too much, you just start chipping teeth. This bottle, <laughs> this bottle costs more than Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Hennessy, I re-upped on the private stock. <laughs> Three quarters Hennessy. <laughs> on the horn? Well, I... What is that thing you guys left in the sports bottle? That's the private stock. Oh, my God. I opened it up the other day. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't I smell good. I have a five-year-old. Or, 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 when I was 13, I used to rob my, my uh, friend's mother's liquor cabinet. We would pour everything in a regatta cheese can. Ugh. Like That's everything. Rough. That started my drug habit back in 12. All that liquor. It's kind of what we're doing right yes. now. Right, so, yeah, why not? All right. Well, well let's go around. I'll, I'll do some explaining them. What do you got for us, Paul? So, throughout the show, there's a, I have a little bag over here with some rewards. <laughs> but we have... The, that gonna sounds be, ominous. They're going to be teams, so the teams are going to be... Dildos and crazy no, the, the teams don't really matter, because it's... Everything's well, made up, be. and the points don't matter. But... If not, pass it down. It's just like... Two fucking comic geniuses over here. Yeah. Gotta just keep laughing. The private stock got held up. Make Drink sure more of it. Make it sure it goes. Drink more of it, Mock. It's coming to you. No, send it back to Mock. Oh, ooh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't smell good. <laughs> no, you gotta drink it. Oh, oh no, I don't. Just one, have to. one oh, try. No, I don't. One try. try. One time. Everyone. Phil. Just, nope. Phil. You're gonna be the only okay. person Phil. in <laughs> getting sports drunk history that's not even tried it once. I didn't say that. I'm right now. That's not even going close to me. <laughs> this doesn't. This means it's not around the horn, then. You can take the top off. <laughs> if that's that's a, the concern. That's a liberal bottle. <laughs> <laughs> what is in that? A lot. Everything. Just, a you, lot guys, you guys robbed somebody's liquor cabinet. Is what you did. Uh, like, it's a no. Teenager. Correction. I work for a liquor distributor. These were all bottles that didn't have labels on them, so I got to take them home for free. So you don't you literally don't know what's in there. <laughs> no, we, we do. <laughs> I know some of it. I can promise you that it's three quarters Hennessy. I can promise you that with the exception of Hennessy, nothing that went in there costs more than ten dollars a hand. I feel like okay. having a rap Awful. battle right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the teams don't really matter, it's just because I only made three sheets just at the time. So we're gonna play getting sports or drunk bingo throughout the show. We're not going to talk about it. It's be at the end. You just keep track of how many bingos you get. Um, so Phil and Peter will be a, a team. Machine Washable and Toothpick Souls. And then Rita and the Red Baron. And then the, the awards will be as followed. Whoever wins gets to give the present oh, am I gonna need Google? to the loser. I don't think so. And trust me, you don't want the present. <laughs> no bueno. It's a bead in the private uh, stock. So... <laughs> uh, Phil is a guest One, two, or three So it's just your sheet you get let's, to pick. Go, let's go with one One, okay Machine All right. you So Pete and I are sharing this? Yes Yeah, yeah So you guys Whoever's going to be Whoever's going to be more observant Probably you, probably Phil Probably Phil um, <laughs> So you might want to give this to I don't know who's going to be more observant Kendall or Rita So uh, does the game begin now Or can I start checking shit off That's already happened? You can start checking shit off That already happens But people can challenge stuff If it hasn't, didn't actually happen Okay yeah. Uh, anything in there, just real quick, because I wasn't sh- when I made these, I thought we were gonna have a full house. So anything that is like Jeff and or Chris exclusive, just give it to yourself as a free space. Because, yeah, <laughs> we got we got a bunch already. Whatever he said. <laughs> uh, nice. You guys can have fun with this. <laughs> Did you have plan on me being here? Because I see my name. Yeah. I'm usually at the casino. <laughs> so, like, I wrote, like, one thing for you, and I wrote, like, one thing for Phil, just because I wasn't, like... The, there's a lot of mannerism things that go into yeah. these. Am and I that obvious with the Trump shit? I just know you like him. <laughs> and, and yes <laughs> is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Phil must read my Facebook. <laughs> I am your Facebook. I like this. This is the game. Relax. All right, okay. let's play it. What doesn't she like? So th- this oh, happened. playing it. 
So basically, if something we no no unsolicited like setting shit up either. <laughs> I want that to be known now. So if you have a square that says like, are the gains down and everything? Seems no, like we're no. struggling to hear each other. No, we're it's good. Just, I just want like if you have a square that says like, oh, if Mock says Mock Sheen washable, like Mock can't just if he has that square, he's like Mock Sheen washable. <laughs> like none, none of that. We got to you got to be creative. Get Paul, him to say Paul it. Almost perfect. You did. All right. Um, la, 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 so la. NFL random player. Who's ready? Anybody okay, ready? Let's do it. Everybody ready? I know. We were clipping before, Peter. Okay. Well, right, so I, uh, Go ahead. Ask can questions. I, can, I, can I just do a commissioner's uh, ruling on this? Before I didn't see <laughs> this before this happened. Does that count? Yeah. Okay. You know he's going to pick it apart. It's what he does for a living. No, I want to ma- I want to make sure we don't get the gross thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're getting they it anyway. Get the gross thing. All right. So today's NFL random player is... One of my personal favorites, everybody's suburban uncle, Owen Daniels. <laughs> um, he was a tight end in the NFL who played for the Houston Texans, the Baltimore Ravens, and the Denver Broncos. And was he on the Broncos Super Bowl team? Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. He was, yeah. That guy screwed me in fantasy twice. <laughs> but, Why would you have? So he's a Super Bowl champion, two-time Pro Bowl, made the NFL All-Rookie Team in 06. That's he, has, pick. he has 36... Receiving touchdowns in his career for 5,661 yards. How many career receptions does he have? Is this like an over-under? or just? Nope. Guess whoever's the furthest away has to drink private stock. We're saying just career receptions. Career receptions. Mock goes first. Hmm. How many seasons? Uh, he played from 06 to 15. Hmm. Yeah. 542. Okay. This is almost like a price is right, whoever catches the... All right. so Whoever's closest, not not like the without going over yeah. stuff. Hmm. So just say so a number. Was, so what are you looking at me? Because he wants to guess in the middle. Yeah, four seventy two. I was gonna say that. Like the exact number. Yeah, exact matter of fact. Yeah. All right. Up. Oh, touch belly buttons. Yep. That's, that's the rule. <laughs> Come on. No, oh, shirtless, God. shirtless. <laughs> that's not what I meant. <laughs> Reach Aaron? around. All right. Uh, let's go with six. 637. He still eats the black lady that just ran down the hallway. <laughs> 637! <laughs> 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 Phil, do you have a guess? I'll say 515. 515? Yeah. I feel like he had a lot of injury years. 843. Get out of here with that. <laughs> no, no, no. Hold on. Uh, but I don't know. I have no idea. I'm but, guessing. Uh, I want to say up there, though, like 750. That's your final guess? Yep. Okay. Paul's already know who the winner is. Oh, yeah. I 100% do. It was Kyle because he was only six off. Wow. wow. It was 479. It yeah. took my number, too. Uh, well so, done. Peter, you lost. Big time. So more Hennessy for you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ooh, Mark's going to lose. And then Kendall saved him with his usually high right guess. Down. And then Peter came in and topped it. <laughs> <laughs> the second gotta... he said it, I was like, nope, I know that's wrong. <laughs> so I was like, take one for the team, cocksuckers. <laughs> How was um, that breath stuff? Gosh, we don't have. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> Does, does anybody have anything prepared for Mass's monumentous moments? Oh, this was Mock's monument, 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 monument. What is it called? Mock's monumentous <laughs> moment. <laughs> the team who produced the most, who had the most, who had the best running backs ever. Which team? All Which, like all time. Um, all time. Who had the best running back, or like who, overall? Which running team back? had the most running, best running back of all times on it? Chicago Bears. Uh-uh. Yeah, Walter Payton's better than Emmitt Smith. No. Yes, he is. <laughs> So, Bears have a pretty impressive list. You know, Gale Sayers. Gale Sayers is up there, too. Um, so, I mean, for the Cowboys, you know, Herschel, Herschel Walker. Uh, Emmett, Emmett. Tony um, Dorsett. All good. It, it's tough. Um, I mean, Soon to be... Uh, Pittsburgh, Franco Harris, Jerome Bettis. Pittsburgh's got a real good list. Jerome made it. Jerome made it? <laughs> Rashad? Yeah. No, not Rashad. <laughs> Fitz, I'll give you Fitzgerald, too, son. Which Absolutely. team never had a good running back? How's that? Um, the New England Patriots. That's not true. Hit Corey well, Dillon. Yeah, they on. did. I said uh, all good. I didn't say mediocre. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't like New England either. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'll give him uh, Curtis Martin. You know, he, he ran pretty well there for what four four seasons, four or five. Uh, Mock, looking at you. Nah, you know, you're you a big fan. Go to the Dolphins. Your career. <laughs> so in Chicago. Chicago. I'm trying to think of the time. So it's Gale Sayers, Walter Payton. Uh, That's enough for me. That's all Matt I need Forte, to hear. Um, Adrian Peterson. The, the original Adrian Peterson. <laughs> they had the real Adrian Peterson. Real Adrian first. Peterson. The bigger Adrian Peterson. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't know. It's, that's that's like a whole topic right there. We we'd have to come like prepared. Yeah. Yards of that's a, that's a good topic. We should write that down. So Rebecca, let's... are you dismissing my topic? No, not at all. Well, it's just we a, have it, to research it. Yeah, it requires yeah. homework. You'd have to do some homework too to back up the Emmett Smith thing. Emmett Smith? Yeah. Uh, the one, the f- first one to reach, uh, what was it two thousand or three thousand? Two thousand what? Yards. <laughs> what was that one year he had? Almost twenty five hundred, right? Twenty six hundred. That no, had, he, that had no. been all purpose. I yeah, all like purpose yards. Chris Jones, because Eric Dickerson still holds the records for most yards in the season. It's twenty two hundred. And that's a good point because I feel like the Rams have a sneaky, excellent history. Of yeah, if we're going history, it'd be different. But I, I, I think Walter Payton. That's what he said. He time. said history. Thank you. He said history of the franchise, just all the running backs, right? Is oh, that, then am the I, Cowboys am I aren't even, this correctly. Yeah. I don't think the Cowboys. Are... I feel like they're top ten just for their longevity. I mean, they have a well, lot of names that you would top recognize. 10, but I mean, when you put throw the Bears in the mix, especially you know, well, no, franchise. the Bears, the Rams, the Colts, Seattle. You're going to look at how long they've existed. You For the at... short time span that the Ravens have been around, they've had some real great running backs. Mm. They've had above average running backs. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call any of them Jamal Lewis wasn't great when he was great. Dude was great when he was great. <laughs> he was great was for that. For, for like, average He was great back. like in that season, but he's not an all-time great running back. Like Define he... great. And this is Jamar- like Jamarco Murray had a great year with the Cowboys. Would you consider him a great running back? Not this year. Well, that's that's this not year. the question. It's not year to year. It's <laughs> over the... the but you have to look at the lifespan of a running back in the NFL. So just because you don't last 18 years like an Emmett Smith or something, you know, like that's that makes that's a knock on him. Like for five years, that dude was basically unstoppable. So then, are we talking about a, like a running back's sole time with the team and not their career? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Because I I think if you just look at the well, Ravens, then I, Jamal I think Lewis. you got to take a knock off the Cowboys for Emmett Smith then because he didn't break the rushing record with the Cowboys. Emmett Smith did. No, he did not. He broke it with the Cardinals. With the Cowboys, I understand that. But what puts him in the argument for the so greatest running back of all time? when did he break it? With the Cardinals? With the Cardinals. Yeah. That's why he went to the Cardinals, to break it. And so, I think, Faggot. honestly, I think if Emmett Smith <laughs> didn't finish, if he didn't beat Walter Payton to finish number one in rushing yards, I don't think Walter Payton, or I don't think Emmett Smith's in Wait, the discussion. I thought that was his last game he beat it with the Cowboys, wasn't it? The... No. So, he... He, he actually ended up going back after... I know he did to retire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that, but the the game before he left, he he beat the record, didn't he? I I thought it was with the Cardinals. No, it was with the Cowboys. I remember it was an emotional night for the Cowboys. Didn't you love the NFL 100 commercial during the Super Bowl? Loved it. Where Barry Sanders running by, and then uh, (laughs) Emmett Smith's on the table. I have more rushing yards. (laughs) (laughs) It's the perfect Emmett line to have. (laughs) I mean, so, I mean, the original question, I think it was, like, we're talking about the franchise is, like, who had the most illustrious like running backs? Um, so I mean, there's certain ones we could probably definitely omit. You know, like the Cardinals, <laughs> <laughs> the Cardinals. Browns. Well, not yeah. really. Besides so. Jim Brown, who else? Who was the dude that was on in the '80s when they were like almost making it to Super Bowls? There was the guy who fumbled. It was the game against Seattle. What was his name? No. You're talking they about were the playing guy. the Broncos. You know yeah, who I'm talking about. AFC back to back AFC championship yeah, and he games. Fumbled, he fumbled to lose. They were legit great. I can't remember his name. I can't remember. He was either. excellent. But yeah, but see, but those I guys, was right. It was the game against was, Seattle. I saw it was his last year. His last year, though, he broke it. The year right. before he left. Oh, I'm I, sorry. We're I, talking about two different things. Yeah, I'm moved sorry. On, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it's the Rams. He's going backwards. It's the. I think it's the Rams. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I feel like if I thought about it enough, I'd I'd agree. Um. I'm having a hard time really thinking of anybody better at this point. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Dickerson, Falk. Um, Jackson. Sorry, yeah, Stephen Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> Zach Stacy was a Ram. <laughs> so was Jerome Bettis. <laughs> yes, he was. First, what, three seasons? Todd Gurley. Yeah. I mean, that's a good list. Anderson. That's a really good list right there. Don't, don't come here with those <laughs> CJ <know>, Anderson. <laughs> CJ Anderson and LeGarrette Blunt have been, like, the starting running backs pretty much for, like, the last, like, seven Super Bowls. <laughs> Surprise with Garrett Blunt. He might go there next year. Mm. Is that your prediction? <laughs> no. <laughs> saving it for saving it's a Redskin. It's going to be a Redskin. Why not? Gross. You guys got three people watching. Look at yeah. that. Hey, we're well, I think I'm one. Rebecca might be another. You're watching? I, I have it so to watch the. In case anyone comments. You don't ah. consider. They don't consider you a watcher if you're. Uh, I don't know. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> I'll get Facebook in the second So, hour. I mean, well, Peter kind of kicked off the segment without kicking off the segment. I like it. Just the around the table. I mean, we're going to kind of like do current 
events on this one. And then we'll get to it in the third hour. But. Yeah, but it got you to talk for 45 minutes, didn't it? It's <laughs> genius. <laughs> so does anybody Super have any to- current event type topics they'd like to talk to discuss? I have. Yeah, it's current. Me and Kyle have kind of been going back and forth with this for a while. And I keep hearing it pop up and see things around. Is Julian Edelman a Hall of Famer? Yes. You think so? I think I you do. have to say so. See, I think he's a Hall of Famer, but I just think that him making the Hall of Fame is going to pave the way for other people to make the Hall of Fame, like Marquise Colston. Marquise Colston so, has twice as many receiving yards, twice as many receptions, and like three times the amount of touchdowns. See, that's the thing. Like, his... But Julian Edelman has three Super Bowls, and despite his regular season numbers might not being the most attractive regular season numbers for a running or for a wide receiver all time, he's still second in all time postseason history in receptions and yards. See that that that's, that's kind sort of, of the was... Bernie Williams excuse, you know, like he's like one of those guys that's like right there, yeah. hasn't done enough. I think if he retired today, I think if he pulled a Bruce Bochy, it was just like I'm out <laughs> and just stopped right now. I think it's. I don't think so. I don't. The think NFL Hall does. of Fame's a joke. I wouldn't say that, but I don't think so. I don't think I mean, he's in. A They're lot of, weirdly like particular about certain things, a and lot receivers of plays, have a hard time getting in. Three Super Bowls will put you in. Yeah, in but the NFL. Art, Art Monk led the NFL in receptions for however long after he retired. It took him forever to get into the Hall of Fame. How many Super Bowls did he have? I have no idea. Probably none. I don't know the answer. Championships so, I have no mean idea. more than anything else in all of football. That, that was it doesn't matter like what me you and have Kyle's on argument. your resume. If you've got Super Bowl on it, you're good to go. That was kind of me and Kyle's argument because Edelman's like regular season stats are super mediocre. They're they're I don't really think he gets in. they're not. Hmm? And that's why I don't think he gets in. And so, like the argument I was trying to make to Kyle was, does the playoff numbers and the rings out like do enough to outweigh the mediocre stats? I wouldn't yeah. even say mediocre. You have to compare him as not a lead guy. He's more a slot receiver. And, like, how many other slot receivers are putting up the numbers and grabbing the touchdowns that this guy has? And I know that we're in a different era of yeah. NFL offenses where you have your Wes Welkers and these guys that can do amazing things out of the slot now, but that is technically his position. Yeah. Thank so, you like, you can't take a knock on a second baseman for not having as many home runs as, like, a first baseman or, like, an outfielder because he's just not as powerful. That's not his position. He's a slot receiver. His job is to get first downs, not necessarily touchdowns. And I feel like he's done that job very well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, aside, slot receiver title aside, I feel like he's been the number one there for the past three seasons. Probably maybe. in terms of reliability, but not in terms of position. Well, I mean, so let's let's talk about like last year, for instance. Uh, that was with Amendola was still there, correct? Yeah, last year. Yeah, Cooks was there. Cooks. So are we? We are assuming that Cooks was the, the number one on in paper. Think, probably, I, I think he is because he's your guy that's going to go up against whoever the best defender is. Probably that's that's the if they could draw it up like you want your most I mean, athletic, fastest I, guy. Right. No, I understand. It's tough for me because I think there's like three receivers of the same caliber being you know like Hogan. Amendola and Edelman. And, and Edelman. Yeah, but Edelman. Edelman's exclusively a slot guy, and your exclusive slot guys are never going to be the number one receiver. Which That's is true. sort of what makes it so impressive what he's been able to do. So then, on the same side, is Wes Welker going to get in? No. Well, I but feel it, like he, he would because he has doesn't have as many rings, but he, he he's, he's, got, the, he's, he's got what two the slot receiver guy. Yeah, but you got to no, Welker. He yeah. sucked before he went to the Patriots, and he didn't do anything crazy with the Broncos. We, we, we had this. No, he didn't. He didn't do anything crazy with the Broncos. But how many Broncos, rings did he win with the Patriots? I think oh, Welker. Did he, did he win none? He may have won none. I think he lost that game against the Giants and then was out. So he's got one yeah. ring then. Maybe with the Broncos, right? He won a ring with the Broncos. Yeah, that's it. But, he, I mean, even playing in a Super Bowl, I feel like, is a big deal. So I mean, Let alone multiple. So I had this argument with the Souls a little while back. Now, Especially at that point, I'm sorry, Kendall. Okay. Offensively driven teams that go to the Super Bowl and you're a part of that offense in whatever way, I feel like that does have some merit. The problem with with Wes Welker is before he said not that he wasn't good with the Dolphins or the Chargers, it wasn't his role. He was a, he was a special teams guy. He just the, the receivers were just better, you know. And the, the, and the Chris that hurts Chambers. Him if you're talking Hall of Fame, he didn't have the stats. So the Hall of Fame really takes away the regular season stats. That's why I think they look forward to the most. Well, I'm curious because Mark and I were looking comparatively. You know, his numbers were far superior to. To um freaking who are we talking about now? <laughs> I got I got all these what, Chris Hogan <laughs> I think no Chris Hogan <laughs> Edelman 
Do you have those? Do you have those stats? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Welker right now. Hold on. But just my opinion, I don't think Wes Welker even had close to any stats that belonged in the Hall of Fame. All right, when you uh, when you just like pull up on Google best slot receivers of all time, the number one name that pops up is Doug Baldwin. <laughs> so like, I don't know if I agree that he's a even really a slot guy truly. Anyways, but Anquan <laughs> Bolden is number two. That's interesting because I mean it's like never had the best speed, never had the best routes, but was always consistently like even at an advanced age. Do, okay, is that guy a Hall of Famer? Anquan Bolden. Bolden? I don't I, think without so. looking at his stats, I don't. I don't know. I mean, he he's always been you know longevity alone. Yeah. I yeah, feel like he's in the time. consideration. And it's interesting because it's funny. It's saying it's slap, but in my mind, I never pictured him. I've always pictured him, like, especially when he was younger, being the number one yeah, guy. On the outside. Know. He I, may have been for a short time in his career, because, uh, like, the number two guy here is Randall, uh, three guys, Randall Cobb, who definitely started as a one. But probably, as Jordy Nelson came out, reverted to the two or even three behind Donald Driver at a certain time, you know? Like, it the depends. Driver towards his end. Yeah. I mean, it, it depends on the offense that you're in. I right. think Julian Edelman has only succeeded when he's been in the offense that, like forever, how long it is. You know, I mean, I don't know what makes an NFL Hall of Fame career in baseball. If you can make 10 to 11 or 12 years of really high level playing, usually you're in the consideration. I think in the NFL, look, I feel like it's eight. I feel, I feel like, like, they, like if you make eight solid years. They're going to different things with Edelman than they are with a normal receiver. They're not going to look at the same things they're going to look at for Reggie Wayne and Marquise Colston and Larry Fitzgerald that they're going to look at for Julian Edelman because – that's not the type of player Julian Edelman is. You that's can't compare Julian Edelman to DeAndre Hopkins. You can't do it. They're not the same player. Go look at it. What was it? 2017. Julian Edelman had, I think it was something like 450 yards on third down catches on over the course of the season. No drops. And was responsible for, through rushing, receiving, and passing, was responsible for like 87% of first downs made for the New England Patriots that season. Yeah. That's on third down. Those are things that matter. Yeah, I think for not sure. to mention second all time in receptions in postseason history, second in yards. Yeah, I think he's a Hall of Famer, and it's, for the the point you made earlier, just I think that the Super Bowls you know, they weigh very heavily, and it's not it's not like he won three Super Bowls and was coming off the bench, you know, to have twenty one receptions a year yeah. and, and have four touchdowns, or whatever. He, the guy's producing. Welker has no rings. He was See, on the Broncos team. He was on the team that lost. That lost. He, he oh, lost wow. three Super Bowls. Wow. Didn't know that. Losing what, Super Bowls is not a knock, though. Jim no, Kelly can tell you. No, I, Thurman I've, Thomas can tell you. I've always made the argument being the, the best in your conference, for Arena. sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. Fair point there, Pete. But, Although I'm not ready to call Julian Edelman the Dan Marino of his position. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. it, it's one of, like, I just keep seeing it everywhere, and it was kind of interesting to think, because, like, I can... I, I don't know which way I lean yet, because, like I said, the, the stats are kind of That's my point. He's subpar, still playing. He's I, still I think, playing. I think, again, he retires right now, I say no. I think if he plays another three years at a similar level, yeah. I, I think he's he's in heavy consideration, at the very least. I think Definitely only, not first ballot. Well, I, don't, I don't think. No, but he's going to make the Hall of Fame. Yeah. He could, I think he could retire right now and make the Hall of Fame. The only thing that would jeopardize his career is a, a Ford Bronco ride. You know, it's the only thing that's going <laughs> to change That's <laughs> <me>. racist. <laughs> hey, if they bring that car back, I'm going to buy one. It is back. They are. It is it back. Back. <laughs> yeah. The two. I, oh, I thought it was next year. That's a verbal contract there. I'll, I'll buy you better one. better go buy one. I'll buy one. I need to see the job first. first. Call <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> I need <a> job <laughs> first. Rebecca's like, uh uh-uh, we need an apartment first. Oh, we're going to live in that car. Yeah. Rebecca, you'll live where he tells you. Kyle, do you have any <laughs> current event things? I do. So there's a lot of speculation that Phillies are the landing <laughs> spot for Bryce Harper. <laughs> I don't care what you guys are laughing Falsely about. reported by Kyle. <laughs> okay. I have Kyle's back on that one. It was just so it's funny. funny. Yeah, right I, over there. <laughs> not to I'll cut you up. Okay. Kyle, so Kyle calls depressed. me. Kyle calls me. Bryce Harper signed with the Phillies. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And we talked... And then, like, half an hour later, Bleach, Philly's the favorite to land Harper. <laughs> it's like, hmm. Oh, that's well, too funny. Whatever. Bryce go Harper's going to be a Philly. Hey. Why are you no mad about that? It. Yeah. Well, it's funny because Kyle he, is forever. He's been shitting on Harper for years. That's forever. why he's mad about it. He's still shitty defensively. Although, Kyle tells me 
he thinks Harper's going to be better down the stretch than Machado. Uh, Machado's an asshole. He's, and you can tell. 2019 is going to be great for Kyle because Harper's going to be a Philly and Joe Flacco's not a Raven. <laughs> Kill us. I wish he still was. I hope, I hope the Broncos beat you in the AFC championship <laughs> game so bad. Not going to happen. You're right. It'll be the Patriots. <laughs> Who are we kidding? That's an interesting, you know, LA is getting a lot of flack. For that signing. Flacco. Which, uh, private stock. Come on. This is yeah, your time. You have to do private stock for that. <laughs> Not me. I didn't say it. You make a bad pun, you have, that's <laughs> private stock. That's 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 like the number one rule for private stock. Ah, uh, here we go. I have to even see what color thing. this is. It's, it's in a I'm black assuming bottle. It's just like that's all right. I'm going to drive you home tomorrow. I work at Tellington. <laughs> home? I have to go to work tomorrow. I'm oh, on the air right. tomorrow that's at right. 6 a.m. Pond water. Oh, so then you can just sleep here. It's cold. He's going to the couch. It smells like cough syrup. Yeah, yeah, it tastes like it too. <laughs> Let's go tussing in there. <laughs> I mean, do you have anything to like add to it? No, I just want to hear just... everybody's opinion. Like, Mock was saying that it's a it's bad deal bad for 10 years. Yeah, it's, it it just doesn't really taste that good. It's like if someone melted is... a lollipop and put so it I in. I guess there. what the question, I guess what the thing is that they're giving well, them 10 years. I don't agree. I don't think any player should be signed to 10 years. Yeah. But the, but the, the fact that it's not a bad deal because he's, Harper's made it known he's not signing for less than 10. He wants the long term deal, he wants 8 to 10 years. So if you can make the deal cheaper by doing it ten years instead of doing it for eight, what the hell's the difference? What's two more years, honestly? Who was the last guy to reasonably get that though? Was it Canel when he went to Seattle? Uh, yeah. John Carlo. His was ten. That his, was more his was of a, thirteen. Oh my god! <laughs> that was more of a trade situation. Well, the the contract he signed with the Marlins it was like thirteen years. I forget the money, but I mean it was... Trout has a lifetime deal on the table, still. <laughs> He'll probably he should get it, but. Besides the point. It, it's those things, you know, every player that signs that 10 year deal, but you they don't pan it. out. The two guys, Robinson Cano and Albert Pujol, they both signed it when they were 30. Okay, they, they signed it when it, the peak at the end of their. What am I looking for? The, so they've kind of like, we'll call it, they kind of peaked at that point. And yeah, they peaked before of, 30. Right. At the point that they were signing the contract, they were among the 10 best players in the sport. Is mm-hmm. that what you're saying? Okay. And then they hit the 30 mark. CC Sabathia would be another one. And I mean, he gonna... signed a very long deal with the Yankees. Guarant- uh, admittedly, it had an opt-out clause within like four years, which yeah. he did decide to stay in, but he could have left in the middle. Mm-hmm. So that opt-out, I feel like, does help players at a certain point. But I feel like less and less teams are willing to offer that. How much money is baseball making? Like, were they just offered Mercado what two hundred and forty million for eight years? Well, See, I feel because like... there's no there's no salary cap in baseball. But it's that's how much are they making? There's not a salary cap in baseball. There is, but there isn't. One okay, stadium here, can't make that in a year. Your salary cap. <laughs> oh, but if you go over it, you just got to pay the luxury pay more, tax. The yeah. Yankees have been playing the luxury tax longer than I've been alive. They won't be this that's year. That's not true. They won't be this year. <laughs> <laughs> They're <laughs> under. They're under. <laughs> for that's now, ridiculous. until you sign Harper or Machado. They're not going to either. I don't think they forty can million. You guys are getting Machado. Every year that you go over the luxury tax, it multiplies. So the Yankees at a, at a certain point last season were playing were paying almost as much in tax than they were certain players. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? And they're so making like, it back. They are. Oh, yeah. But but here's where the luxury tax comes in, where it actually helps all of baseball. So the reason a team like the Pirates wants the Yankees to pay luxury tax every single season uh-huh. is that if the Pirates don't draw. That luxury tax goes into a big pot that gets distributed to all of the teams to keep them afloat. Okay. So that's sort of how it works. Yeah. So how that's why, like, the Pirates the don't complain. You know, like, that's that's why this luxury tax got voted in, because you have at the top, like, maybe seven teams that will be willing to spend to bring in these big players and multiples. Yankees are one, obviously, the Red Sox, the Dodgers. Even the Mets will spend yeah. at a certain point. Don't talk to a Mets fan in the last five years because they won't now. Or but may. at a certain point, or any, I guess. But <laughs> at a certain point, the Mets were spending some big money. Sh- Chicago Cubs will spend money. So that luxury tax helps keep afloat all of these other teams like the Reds, who will never do that. Or the Oakland A's, who historically will never, ever do that. So are they getting this money from Shocked the networks? Is that how they're... How? No, the league distributes. But I'm saying, like, for the Yankees, let's say. The Yankees, how are they getting this money? Are their tickets well, you gotta keep in mind. Are they getting the money from the networks that are what, paying them to play? Well, they, they own the network, so yes. Well, they own the stadium, so yes. Yeah, There's but no MCs. corporate sponsor on, on the stadium. They own it. Anything that's sold within the stadium, basically... They either get a major cut of or all of but what's all the, the merchandise with the Yankee emblem. Like just think, just think about how often you see a Yankee logo somewhere. Yeah. The Yankees are making money on all of that. What's their salary though a year? A billion? 
No. It, it's it's outrageous because you got to think there's 162 games. So you have 81 home games. Are they filled out though? The without time? the playoffs. The Yankees without with the that's the thing. Like these big market teams. So what is it? Yan- Thirty bucks a ticket or more? Oh, it uh, depends on where you're going to sit. sit I bleachers. usually like when I buy tickets, it's usually forty, forty five dollars. All right, ticket. so what? Twenty thousand people. Twenty. It's a fifty thousand. Is it fifty thousand? Yeah. Okay. So fifty thousand. I think it's fifty six. That's only two hundred million right there, though. So where's the rest? Oh, only. Well, <laughs> broadcast well, number one. Broadcast, well, broadcast that's right. what I'm saying. Two hundred million isn't a kick in the bucket when you have what thirty people. So, making... I, but again, Pete, when you look at the value of baseball franchises, the Yankees are so high on the There's, list yeah. because they own their own network. network They're too. not like the Red Sox where they have to borrow from Nesson and like they're they're sort of you know like they have a piece of the pie kind of thing. The Yankees have the entire pie. They yeah. have all of it. Yeah. They own that broadcast network. Nobody so, else broadcasts them besides Yes? I think Yes already is worth a billion. Is it worth a billion and just on its own? And the crazy part about Yes is... Yeah, but Fox bro- bro- broadcasts the Yankees too, don't they? Well, it, it, you in know, certain... Like the, the Sunday games, like a Sunday afternoon and game. And they have to pay whatever. the Yankees. They have to pay Yes too. They have to pay Yes? Yeah. Which is which is basically paying the this Yankees. This is why your cable yeah. bill's high. Because, <laughs> because if the Yankees are going to Fox, I mean, Yes is probably not going to they carry can, that right? game. They can't carry the game at Fox. And also, uh, well, the, the game will be black. Like, they'll, they'll do like a blackout game. or whatever. It's a yeah, national. Yeah. They'll do well, a blackout, but what, what Yes will do is they'll re-air yeah. the broadcast probably yes. the next yes. day sometimes. Well, they the, do that. You know, Steinbrenner's a genius. Well, and the crazy thing about Yes is Yes being the Yankees network, they have other sports on yeah. their own. They like, carry the yeah. Nets. They're, there's a soccer team in there. Is it the yes. Galaxy? Uh, no. No. That's LA. It was the fire. Yeah. That's right. So they're rolling in it. I don't even remember what we were talking about. <laughs> I know, it's throwing you guys off. We all luxury Harper. tax. That's Machado, just, Harper. All, well, that's, all well, that's glory to the Yankees. <laughs> like, baseball generates so much. Just the season's so long, the merchandise, it, it's, it generates so much money, especially for the big market teams. But that's the thing. If you're a player and you get someone like Machado coming in, and you pretty much put all your heart and soul into it, and then... He's coming in making two hundred forty million, and you're making a lousy two million three. But well, that's the thing, though. That's cheap. it's like you gotta be Machado. you gotta be mad. I'd take a lousy two million three. Million. I know you <laughs> would, and I would. But like, like, this fucking guy's coming in, never doesn't even know what the locker room looks like, and he's making more than a whole team. That's, that's man, the world of professional um, sports. If you can hit two eighty five and thirty five homers every year, you can make the same money. Well, let's see what Tebow does this year. <laughs> bats Jesus. under 200 he's, he's coming up this is, this is, is the year is he playing this year refuse to go to the AAF <laughs> or L uh, or whatever it is that would have been would my team would you go for 70 grand no that's what the, the only most they pay well you know it's funny because Kaepernick won a 20 million yeah. well, well, Tebow makes we a, can't even get into that guy yeah, please. Tebow made a <laughs> no. huge stink he wants Trump. to play, play quarterback like hey we have an opportunity to play quarterback. No, no. They don't no. pay the, the, the most they pay their players are 70 grand ever saying 75 I don't know, do you think Tebow's in it for the money I, I think I he know. just he's the, not the ship the has pussy. sailed. <laughs> Definitely not in for that. Because no. I don't even think he's playing baseball like to make it to the. I think he's playing because he his can. foundation makes him enough money. And and he's doing the announcing thing. Yeah, I hate he's that. actually fairly good at it. Yeah, I feel like he's fairly good at it. I feel like that might even be his best avenue. He's no he's Tony Romo, but I feel like he's pretty. <laughs> I think good. he's a good announcer. I I do. He's entertaining for like the college football stuff. He, he he's uh, he's got enough money. He's fine. Yeah. Plus he's got a hot. Model now too. So, didn't he get married? I think he just got married. He got so. engaged, oh. not she's, married. She's a model, right? Sure. <laughs> I thought she was a model. Oh, Could be a model. I, I don't even know who she That's is. her uh, one claim to fame. She's a model. <laughs> God, I think Dirk can average five points a game for the rest of the season. Yeah. Nice. All right. So I have a quick question. I know we're gonna go to break like real soon, but this was my current event thing. We rambled about the baseball, but I wanted to get to this. I did homework on this. Um. So I wanted to pose a question. It's basketball related. I'll give stats so people who don't follow basketball can weigh in. But I want, who I've heard a lot of talk about this with the All Star game coming up with Dirk being retiring. Who's the best foreign born player in NBA history? Dirk. I've got five people for you. Okay. All right. Is Mono Ginobili on that list? So number number five. Oh, well, sorry, not, that was my any, head against uh, the microphone. Not sorry. in any specific order, but Patrick Ewing. Foreign born, really? Jamaica. Huh. Twenty one points per game, ten rebounds per game, two assists. One and a half steals, two and a half blocks, 11-time All-Star. And the only person on this list to win Rookie of the Year. Kyle Jenner. Manu Ginobili, 15 points per game, 3.8 rebounds, 4 assists, 1.4 steals, 0.3 blocks, 4-time NBA champion, 2-time All-Star, only player on the list to be a sixth man. 
and smacked a bat out of the air mid-game. True. That matters. Steve <laughs> Nash. <laughs> Steve Nash, 14 or 15 points per game. Is he Canadian? Eight and a half <coughs> assists per game. He's from South Africa, actually. South Africa. Uh, one steal per game, point one block, three rebounds, two two-time MVP, first time ever back-to-back MVP, and an eight-time All-Star. Dirk, 23 points per game, eight rebounds per game, two and a half assists, one steal, one block, one-time champion, one-time finals MVP, 12-time All-Star, currently seventh on the scoring list all-time, and if he can score 109 points by the end of the season, we'll pass Wilt Chamberlain for sixth. Wow. And then the other one is Akeem Olajuwon. Ooh. 21 points per game, 11 rebounds, two and a half assists, 1.5 steals, three blocks, two-time champ, two-time finals MVP, one-time MVP. Oh, Dirk was also an MVP. It's important that those finals are only when Michael Jordan was not playing basketball. I feel like that's important. One-time MVP. Dirk was also an MVP. I forgot to mention that. One-time MVP for Elijah Wan, 12-time All-Star, same as Dirk, and Defensive Player of the Year. Where's Lamar Seek in there? He's somewhere around 50th. <laughs> Where's Hato Turkaloo? <laughs> They're all after Lou all day. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the Zadruna Galskis hey, you range. You throw some respect on him. <laughs> his name. I'm still going to say Derek. Um, my reasoning is because he literally played in every different type of basketball, if that makes sense. So now with the three-point shooting day, he played during the big man era. He's more versatile. Yeah. Yeah. So he was able to more do... More complete game. He was able to do all of it and still have a successful career. Let me... I, I also say Dirk, and I'm going to say this for my... The reasoning for my answer. So, Akeem Olajuwon, with or without Michael Jordan playing basketball, because that Bulls team after he left was still very good. They were. Um, and Scottie Pippen showed that he can be... A, could, could be a team leader and... and Pulled the Bulls very far. But Akeem Olajuwon had a really good team around him in terms of Kenny Smith. And then they brought in Clyde Drexler. Clyde. To win the NBA Finals twice. And then you look at what Dirk had to do to win his one championship. He should have won two. The, the, that Mavs team was better than that Heat team in 06, in my opinion. I just think that Dwayne Wade caught fire at the right time. And the Heat team had a lot of depth. Star power wise, I think the Mavericks were better. But you look at when he won his championship, he went. What did he do? He beat. I forget how it went. He but he beat Durant. I forget how it went. He swept somebody, then he beat Durant in five, and then he beat like the Warriors in six or something like that, or some, something like that. And then he beat LeBron. The, I don't think it was the Warriors yet. Spurs. They beat the Spurs. They beat the Spurs in six. They beat, Spurs. They, they beat have, the, would definitely have to have gone through the Spurs. You're right. They beat the Spurs in six. They beat Durant and Oklahoma City in five. They swept the Lakers. That's what it was. They swept Kobe. When, uh, right after they had they got rid of Shaq, right? Yeah, um, but it doesn't like, matter. But no, still, I'm just Co- they, swept, the they swept Kobe, beat Durant in five, beat this, that Spurs team in six, and then beat the Miami Heat team with Wade, LeBron, and LeBron. Chris Bosh in six. All right, so he had one... Amazing playoff run. No, he had no. He had multiple amazing playoff run. Multiple amazing playoff. I feel like he's just always been a consistently great player. But Dirk's team, when he beat that star-studded Heat team, was nowhere near the caliber of that Miami. It was like him and Terry, right? It was Jason Terry. Jason, yeah, but Jason Terry on the complete decline. I'm just saying that was that was about it that I can remember. Hmm? Tyson Chandler, Steve Finley. Tyson, Tyson Chandler. You're right. Um, Michael Finley. You mean? Yeah, sorry. Steve Finley. <laughs> the baseball right. player? Fit. Fit Finley. You know what? Good for you. Um, <laughs> Michael Finley. They had Sean Marion, who was able to probably defend LeBron at that time. But Really? Yeah. Sean Marion was an elite defender. Probably better than anyone today. But were any of... But out, take Dirk away. No, Are I any it. of them better than Wade at that time, LeBron at that time, no. Bosh at that time? Sean Marion just had the best jump shot in basketball. That was it. I don't know if nobody, nobody laughed at that. So give me the private stuff. Well, uh, Peter was coming down the stairs. And just... it, was the, it was sounded like a dog just fell <laughs> down the stairs. I thought he fell. <laughs> kind of got scared. Sweat boots. <laughs> but. The Mavericks did have Jason Kidd, though. Oh, oh. Yeah. But the Heat had Mike Bibby. Here's what we're forgetting. Which Mike Jason? Bibby? Hmm? Wasn't Jason. Williams? Yeah. No, White Chocolate won it in 06. They're the same damn player. 
Here, here's what we're Except forgetting one's though. Black. We mentioned Manu Ginobili. Tony Parker was born in France and is arguably more important to that Spurs team than Manu Ginobili is. I don't think it's arguable. As the point guard? Uh, it, the point guard position to me is completely overrated when you have other players on the team that are just as good, if not better. Yeah, I remember they had Bruce Bowen. They had, they had Big Shot Bob. They had Tim Dunk. Take Big Shot Bob away. How many NBA? How many? How many teams don't win their finals? <laughs> All of them. You take it. You taking at least one away from the Spurs. <laughs> you and one imagine away from the Lakers. that's your career. <laughs> you just make consistently huge shots in the playoffs and just, win championships. No. That's it. That's, that's your career. It's amazing. That's that's fine the with dream. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like He's got Souls. more rings than LeBron. That's fine with me if that's my career. Souls was so defeated, but like all of them. <laughs> nah, dude, that guy was just ridiculous. He wasn't even good. Who? Robert Hoy. He just played for the good teams, but he made clutch. Shots. No, no, I get it. Like, I'm not saying At the about most that. clutch times. He just sucked every other game. But my thing is, is that Manu Ginobili meant. Way, I think Manu Ginobili went may, meant way more to that Spurs team than Tony Parker did. Man, I don't know if I agree. I, I, agree I guess it. De- I guess it depends on the certain year. I think early t- Tony Parker was just unstoppable at a certain point going to the basket. Like he he just found a way to get through defenses if he had to when he had but to. But Manu score, did he the same would. thing too. Manu always did the same thing. Not and, early. In Manu, early he was basically in, in Manu just was a also, shooter. But Manu was also the, also the player that was like, "Hey, I'm playing at a starting caliber level," and Greg's like. Hey, we think that we don't really have any scoring depth off our bench. We would really like to put you on the bench. Okay, I'm gonna do what's best for the team. You got that. Guy, guy would have been a starting three on any team in the NBA, but he chose to ride the pine pony for the start of the game to do what was best for the team and result in more championships. Tony Parker, I think I, does, is do you think he regrets right? that now? I don't know. I'm just saying. No. In the first five years of that dynasty, I think Tony Parker was more important to it than Manu Ginobili was. It's close. Mm, I don't know. I think you need a great point guard to lead these teams. Sometimes I think all the I think any statistics that are are shown up, and it would be things like All Star votes and stuff like that, that would beat Parker over Ginobili, would be simply because Parker was always the starter, and Ginobili chose to come off the bench to help the team in depth depth situations. I don't I don't dislike Manu Ginobili. I feel like I need to put that out there. <laughs> I think I, I think Manu Ginobili was far more important to that team. That entire tenure. Of I'm that not Spurs saying he team. wasn't important. More important than Tony Parker. That's what I'm saying. I dis- I'm not saying that I disagree important. with. I think he was far more important than Tony Parker. Post 2011, I'll say he was. But you know who's going to be the best? Luka Doncic. <laughs> Wait, why are we listening? To this? <laughs> all right, we got to break. When we come back, Mox got a segment prepared that we're going to talk about percentages and all that stuff, right? Some fun stuff. More or less, yeah. All right, good, good intake. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll be back in about five minutes. Red Baron, play us out. All right. And now, back to getting sports with drunk on the PPRN Radio Network. Welcome back to Getting Sports with Drunk. I'm your host, Cupcake the Riddler, and I'm joined by assholes, all of them. Yeah, yeah. Whoop! Your dad has a career in voiceover. We're joined by the usual degenerates as well as special guests. Oh, he did a great job. Phil. Hello. Phil Phil, Nye, the science guy. Phil Nye, the science guy from, uh, you should bring that to Chaz and AJ. I don't know if they would know what that is. They don't know what Bill Nye, the science guy is? They might not. They shouldn't be on radio. It's basically (laughs) Dino Tosh's father. (laughs) Oh, that doesn't help anything. By the way, can it I helps everything? Can I open my hour two beer? Yeah, yeah. Or, or yeah, is there like a but you don't whole ceremony it. before? No, you don't introduce it. So oh, at the okay. end, so oh damn! To... See, I, I saved that. I tiered them no, correctly. You to, then. No, you do you do beer reviews. If you're at the just end, tuning in on YouTube and Facebook, uh, we have Phil from Chaz and AJ, the producer. Yeah, here he at just studio. said it. Yeah, I just introduced him. And he literally just said it. And we're also joined by special guest uh, host interrupter Peter Pinna. That's uh, you. Your rent goes up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget tomorrow my show and Wednesday night and Saturday mixtape here on PPR Radio. Wow. Plug yes. in the middle the of plug. the show. That's yes. it. That means Mock doesn't have to do it later. <laughs> <laughs> but plugs for all. Speaking of machine washable, you oh. have prepared some stuff? Yep, you gotta pull my uh, thing up here. Is that, is that an eye touch? No, it's my phone. Get a new phone. Why? <laughs> fucking said so. <laughs> Your video looks amazing, by the way. Yeah. The lady. <laughs> so, so what I did here while I was sitting in class the other night was I kind of just came up with, uh, like, I said hot takes, but they're really not, I guess. 
But um, I'm going to give them. Boy, they really are, though. Some of them, I guess, are. Just but... go all in. Whatever it is, <laughs> it is. But then you guys kind of tell me, like, the odds of it happening, whether it's likely, unlikely, and we can kind of talk about them a little bit. So buy or sell? Sure. Just buy or sell segment. Sure, Kyle. Nice. Is this an argument? Are we arguing? <laughs> Cool so, uh, the first one I have There goes here. the boiler. <laughs> Peter. Peter is running. First one I have here. Next season, Baker Mayfield finishes as a top five quarterback. So, what's the percentage of that happening? Yeah, like, do you, how possible do you think it is? So, all NFL? All NFL next season. Top five total quarterback. Five percent. You're, you're asking me if I can't name five quarterbacks that would have a better season than him? No, he's asking That's basically what, what he's asking. No, he's asking you to give a percent, not name people. But I mean, do, do you think that it's it's possible that he finishes as yeah, a top I think five it's possible, but I think it's a five percent chance. Okay, I think it's extremely unlikely, but possible. I'll say four percent, but yeah, basically exactly the same thing. I say zero. <laughs> there is no chance he come. He's a top five quarterback. Kyle, you're just a Baker Mayfield hater. No, because yeah, he might have a great season, but no way he does whatever you know. Mahomes does. What if he breaks his arm? Who? Mahomes. Mahomes. He's not. He could. <laughs> it <laughs> happened to Drew Brees. He separated his shoulder. The soul's reasoning is always <laughs> just like, no, it just won't happen. Yeah, no. <laughs> just flat out won't happen. So, so if, I guess to – sorry, go ahead. 26 other quarterbacks that get hurt, then yes. So then I guess to amend it that's, – That's the 5%. All right. Okay. So then what? to amend it, top 10? 10? <laughs> nah. No. No. Nah. Shout out to uh, Eric Abranowitz tuning in on Facebook. Shout out. Stash. Maybe. Is it? I don't know. Maybe top 15? Maybe? I I think he's at least in the top 10. I, 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 I think it's still too early in his career. Yeah, that's fair. And I don't think he's got much to throw to. He's not a stack quarterback, in my opinion. He might win, I think he's a winning quarterback, but he's not a stack quarterback. That's fair, too. His stats were, they were good for a rookie. He but... throws a lot of picks. Okay. I'm not saying that Ben does. But. <laughs> so the next one I have here, with Bryce Harper, we know he's going to, or I guess more than likely be on a different team this year, new new environment. He will be an MVP finalist this season. Who? Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper. Will be an MVP finalist this yes. season? 98%. I, I also big time believe he'll be right right up to the end. For no matter the, where he goes, he's getting a finals. smaller ballpark, so he's going to hit more home runs. I mean, he already hit 30 in Washington. But I think in a small park, he'll hit at least 40. And I think his RBI is going to go up to like 100. A lot of people yeah. thought that about Gene Carlos Stanton. Didn't happen. But he, Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. So you're but just talking about this one year. Sometimes this, the change in environment season. takes a full season to get used to. I think it's a difference. I'm not even saying Gene Carlos Stanton had a bad year. Yeah. He just didn't have a 57 home run year. But 71%. My opinion is that it, it's a difference between New York. And, if, and say if you go into Philadelphia, it's different than Philadelphia. All the media is not shined on you. 71%. Unless you go to New York. Like, New York, like, the media is right there waiting for you. Souls. 71%. <laughs> All right. I just wanted to let you know what I was saying. Sorry. No, no, don't be sorry. I just wanted to let you know. I, I just think, and me, me and Kyle have talked about this before, I think Harper's going to be that guy that goes to a new team, and it's just going to reignite him. It's going to be for you. And he's going to take off. Um, especially if he goes to a team like the Phillies, which... I guess they're a bigger market, but they're not, you know, like the New York or Boston. I think he can just go in there and be a catalyst for that team and just jump off the step up. He's this year. still so young. Yeah. He's so young. In fact, why the 10 year contract is worth it. We have uh, Eric saying he's not buying that Harper is an MVP candidate yet. I guess that's what you're saying, Eric. Uh, if you got a, a percentage you think where, where he'd fall, we'll see if you. Get some interaction but there. See, a, I it, mean, would, it would depend on which league he falls into. Like the American League, if he winds up there, if he, say, winds up with the White Sox, that's a tough league to break through yeah. already as an MVP candidate. It's tough. It's not that it's undoable, especially for someone of his caliber. It's just tougher. If he does go to the Phillies, I think the percentage is higher. I think if he stays in the National League, the percentage is certainly higher. Especially because he has a lot of people around him. So, like, more chances of RBIs are going to happen and more chances of all this spotlight not on him. You know, they have the JT Wamuto. They have Andrew McCutcheon. They have people around him that can take some of the spotlight away. I think for Philadelphia, too, it's, it's more about, like, cheesesteaks than anything. <laughs> also, it's going to get real fat. <laughs> the fans either love you or hate you. 
in. Yeah, Cal, you're one of those people. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. At age 26, at this point in his career, I don't think Bryce Harper has an issue with the spotlight. I don't think that's part of the issue. I think the issue is, does he have enough talent around him yeah. to pad those stats? Because the stats do matter in the MVP race. They do. Yeah, absolutely. They just do. So if you wind up in this barren wasteland of talent, you know, then no, I don't I don't think that's going to happen for him. But I think in the NL, I think it's easier for him. Just given just given the more level playing field of, of players, I think he stands out more in the NL than he does in the AL. The uh, the next one I have here back to the NFL, we talked about him briefly. Pat Mahomes. Any, any NHL on this? Nope. Nope, there's not. I was trying to come up with one, Paul. <laughs> I was trying. Look at his face. <laughs> um, I need someone to drive me home. <laughs> <laughs> How much of that is gone? I can't see through it. I feel like I drank half of it, probably, like, I don't know, two sips. <laughs> it's 50 ounces. But um, it's four beers. Patty Mahomes, where are we? We're talking about Pat Mahomes. Seventy. It's it's twenty seven percent. Oh my god. We, no. <laughs> we saw oh him. God. He just won the MVP. What is what are the odds he falls off next season? Bottom fifteen quarterback. Bottom fifteen. Bottom fifteen. So can lower we, half of the league. Well, I was say, can we I say mean, bottom sixteen? Because sure. that would be lower half. <laughs> yes, he's right. <laughs> Not that it makes that much of a difference, but I could see him being the sixteenth quarterback. <laughs> I think he's, he's still 16th, a top-10 quarterback. If he's the 16th he's. quarterback, then he's not bottom. He's still top half. I mean, the I, mean I, I, I think the, the fall-off is guaranteed. I don't think he throws for 50 touchdowns yeah. again. But if he throws for 39, I think he's still a top-10 quarterback. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll say 5% again. I think it's low. I, I think you, you can't go this far. 25%. 30%. I'll give it 30%. That's, that's fairly high. Yeah. Because be, un- be... unlike the first prediction you gave, like you've got Baker was a top five thing, so you got Baker going up against veterans that have been doing it forever. Not to mention one specific New Orleans Saints quarterback who's going to have a very big chip on his shoulder coming into next season. Plus, you look at all the other How'd that taste talent around him and all that stuff. It's slimy, um, but for Mahomes. I think it would be very difficult for him to finish in the bottom half of the quarterback race. But I also think that when it comes to Baker, we have still a lot to see from Baker. And we still have a lot to see from that Browns offense as a whole, especially yeah. when Kareem Hunt decides, when, when Kareem Hunt's eligible to play. That opens up a whole new world. Yeah. you got to figure Kareem Hunt could very easily add another 800 yards to Baker's resume and six or seven touchdowns. Yeah. Absolutely. Very easily. That's that's not a stretch at all. And but, that's, that's even with only playing maybe six games. <laughs> that could easily yeah. happen. I think your suspension's only four. But I, anyway, I, don't, I don't think it's more than six, but yeah. But anyway, I'm saying, but back, let's back say it's the, ten games. Even yeah. in six games, we know what he can do. Oh, absolutely. Do. Like we saw the, what happened in the first three weeks of Mahomes the season. Thing, I think that there's a lot of teams that are going to be you know, you look at just the, the three teams in his division alone. Gruden is no slouch of a coach at all. Bad drafter, great coach. So Gruden's going to be playing to stop Mahomes. Speaking of Gruden. Anthony Lynn is a defensive-minded coach, and he's got a very good defense that not was, was not all together at all last year, health-wise. Yep. And the Broncos still have a very good head coach and now brought in arguably the best defensive coordinator in all of football last season, to be their head coach. So right there alone, you've got two of the NFL's top ten defenses that he's going to have to face four times. Then you look, he's got to play a first-place schedule. Belichick's no slouch to play against, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Absolutely. The Texans are going to be no slouch to play against. They're a very good team defensively and can put up points offensively. Oh, and <clears throat> and when Mahomes... At one point, one and when nine Mahomes, straight games this past season. And when Mahomes made his mistakes... His most important mistakes were when he had to play shootout football. Yeah. Because when you have to throw the ball 50 times, you're going to make mistakes. Ask Ben Roethlisberger. I'm not saying it to shit on Ben. But no, ben you're has, right. You're ben right. has had to make a career out of throwing 40 times a game. Yeah. And that's why. And Eli Manning, too. Because they had, you know, running back situations haven't always been the way they should be. Yeah. Blah, 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 whatever. So that's sort of how the offenses but are created in the today's NFL. I think Mahomes well. has a. a on paper, the Chiefs as a unit don't ha- may not have as tough of a schedule as Mahomes has against defenses. Yeah, 
if that makes sense. That's fair. So, I mean, I still think it's very low because I don't think he's going to be in the bottom 16. I, I, I just, I mean, you look at any rookie that's going to start, people like Josh Rosen, Tannehill, I'm sure, you know, or Foles, whoever, you know, because Foles has on and off games. I don't think Wentz is that good. Who knows what you're going to get out of Eli Manning next year. Yeah. You know, Dak Prescott, you know. Teddy B. But, I'm saying, but like all these guys, you don't know what you're going to get out of them. Even Mitch Trubisky, you know, Stafford, Cousins. things like that. So, no, uh, that's those are good points. So, so the thirty percent is more attested to him, him getting in his own head versus yeah. defensive stopping him, just I, because I, he's he's I young. I don't see that in his personality. I just don't. Um, I I know nothing about like judging quarterbacks' personalities, but <laughs> I just don't see him as someone who suffers from that. I don't see him trying to make things more complicated than they are. And I see quarterbacks that try to do that. I think Philip Rivers, early in his career, tried to make things more complicated than they were. I don't think, I think that's what he's going to do. It's going to be the opposite. He's going to get too comfortable in his own skin, and he's going to think that he can do these flashy yeah. things, and he's going to get lit the fuck up, and he's going to start getting picked left and right. Because the no look pass is cute, and that's great, but <laughs> can't do it all. The it's time. not going to work against everybody. <laughs> it's not what you want to be known for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Patrick, in my opinion, Patrick Mahomes is one defensive game from one five sack game away from rattling his cage for a, a very good chunk of time. And that was, the th- I mean, we kind of talked. I think about if a team it. can get to him by week nine, I think we from let's call it week nine to week eleven, short window. But whoever's playing them in that time, not week nine to week eleven, but their their ninth to eleventh game of the season. If a team can get to him and really just fuck him up, make him throw for 50% completion, one touchdown, under 300 yards, sack yeah. him five times, I think that could very well be the self-destruction to the Chiefs, rest of the Chiefs season. See, that was the thing. I mean, we kept talking about all through the playoffs. It was like, we never saw the Chiefs have that game, you know, where they just like fell off and Mahomes looked horrible. They, they didn't have that game the whole season. So it will be interesting to see when it happens, how he responds. So that's a that's a fair point. Well, that's why I think because they play next year. I think one of the biggest games of the year, at least on paper for me, is going to be the Chicago Bears versus no, the um Chiefs. Chiefs, because you've got a team. You figure that on paper, the way it's looking is you're going to have a team going out there that knows that it can control a game and win a game on defense versus a team that can control and win a game on offense, and a team that as of right now, is spotty offensively versus a team that's very spotty defensively. and They did fire their defensive coordinator. In my opinion, I, I think that game, honestly, is going to come down to the Bears' offense versus the Chiefs' defense. Yeah. But neither here nor there. On to the next one. Well, I feel like you've been given a percentage for any of these. Right well, you there. guys were in the zone, <laughs> so I'm, no reason for me to jump in. You um, do it all the, all the time anyway. No. We were in the zone last week when we did my, my games, and you were like, I didn't go. Well, and then you give absurd answers, and they had to cut you off. <laughs> I don't know. Well, so give, give Red Baron percentage. So percentage that he's going to be Patrick Mahomes is a bottom half, half quarterback. quarterback. I, I agree with a lot with Ridley said. Thirty five percent. I just think there's a lot, a lot of good stuff that they're doing right now. Uh, I, I think it would have to be a really, really bad game for Mahomes to have to really be yeah. shook. Um, and I just think you know it's other than you know the Chargers. Kind of being on, perhaps we'll call it an upswing. Uh, that division is the Chiefs all the way. But see, my disagreement with you is I don't think Mahomes has to have a bad game. I just think a defense has to have a good game. Yeah. I don't think Mahomes has to. I, don't, I think Mahomes can get shook without throwing a single pick. But if Mahomes comes in and throws thirty percent completion, because defenses are jarring balls loose, batting them down, causing fumbles, things like that, that could very easily. Oh, absolutely. There's always a percentage. I, I, I will say it's lower. I will say it's fifteen. But that, again, is built around the injury factor. So I think if you take, say, Tyreek Hill away from that offense, now there's no Kareem Hunt, and now you take away yeah. Tyreek Hill, can he continue to be a top-five productive quarterback the way that he's been this season? Yeah. I don't know. We don't know that yet. We've yeah, seen Tom Brady be the, able to do that. Because he still has Drew the best Brees tight end in football. That. That's it, though. I mean, but... Tyreek Hill can beat almost any defender just on speed alone. That yeah. does matter. I understand it matters, but but like it's not like like Kelsey can't change games by himself. He's done it before. He did it before Tyreek Hill. Not as consistently. I would say that. 
He's as consistent as Tyreek Hill in changing the game. He's never going to have 200-yard game with two touchdowns or three touchdowns? I don't think so. I mean, he's had a lot of two-touchdown games, and he's had a lot of 100-yard games, which from a tight end is just as big as a 200-yard game from a receiver. That's in tandem with Tyreek Hill, though. He was when doing. It, he was doing distracting it, defenses. But he was doing he it before Tyreek Hill. But he was doing it before Tyreek Hill. No, I'm not saying he's not a great tight end. No, I'm just I, saying I know that you're not saying he that. takes. I'm, what you I'm take saying away is that his he best did it, receiver. But he, you did it. He did it before Tyreek Hill. Is what I'm saying. Kelsey proved his dominance in the tight end position before Tyreek Hill proved himself as the a legitimate threat at the wide receiver position. My point is that you're ultimately graded as a quarterback at the end of the season on certain stats. Some of those stats are completions, which are not always your control, as we know. Touchdowns, which are certainly not your control. And if he loses, let's say, his most explosive option, does that still make him a top 15 quarterback? We don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Mark, the next one I have, a quarterback in that same division, Philip Rivers. Wins MVP next year. No. <laughs> Zero percent chance from you? I'll say 10% chance, but very low. Five. It, you know, I, I've spent a lot of years kind of hating on Phillip Rivers, but... I don't hate him. I actually like him a lot, but I don't think he's an MVP. I, I think he can make a case. I mean, he was he was kind of making some headway this year towards it, and then Mahomes kind of If the Chargers, blew it away. If the Chargers won the division, Phillip Rivers would have won MVP. That's fair. He had that good of a year. He did. But, I mean, the Chiefs were just on another level. Yeah. I will, I will say there is a 38% chance, and I, I don't need stats to back this up, but what I've noticed is that he's actually played better with age. Yeah. Now, there was that period of time that four smarter. or five years. <laughs> perhaps smarter. smarter. You know, maybe less, you know, um, hey, let's just be a gunslinger and throw all over the place, which, you know, he still kind of does now. But I guess smart is what you're saying, and I agree with that sentiment. So I think – he playing better. We've seen it this year. He had a great year. Um, you put a, a season like that together. Arguably again. his best year. Yeah, I think there's a, a he can make a strong case. Now he's really tough going against a lot of players. You know, yeah. I mean, it's tough competition, but it's not out of the question for me. So I'll, I'll call it thirty eight percent. Souls, I give it a twelve percent. I, I don't see it not happening. I don't see it it happening. But like, he's a very good quarterback. But I believe that the running game of the of with Chargers takes away from what Phil Rivers can do. If that makes sense. Well, can you can you explain? Because I don't know what you mean. So like, <laughs> Melvin Gordon Sorry. takes away, let's say, thirty percent of what he used to throw. But Melvin Gordon also catches a lot of yeah, passes yeah, out of the backfield. But he also proven that now he's an elite running back. So yeah. They can give him the ball 25, 30 times a game. Where his rookie season, he couldn't do that. But they're never going to give him 30 rushing attempts. That's not, my, that's not my point. I'm saying that he takes away from at least 15 passes from Phillip Rivers. So the point you're making is that because of Gordon's ability running the ball, that Rivers is not going to be having as many attempts for as many yards, and that's the stats. I think it's a I team. think it's a wash because I think for all I think the attempts that he the passing attempts he takes away for Gordon's ability to run on the ground is yardage and touchdowns he makes up through the air f- for Rivers. I think it improves his QB rating. I think it improves all stats. Yeah. Because when... N- w- I think it ultimately makes him a more since efficient, Tomlinson, smarter was the, quarterback. Since Tomlin, since LaDainian Tomlinson, what was the last... What, who was the best receiving back they had between S- Tomlinson and Gordon? Sproles, but... I mean, that, that's... And was he even notable as a Charger, really? No, b- b- bigger namesake, you know. Oliver? Like yeah? No. <laughs> no. Hey, Danny Woodhead was there for a little while. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Kinda likes it. 70, 78%, 78% yeah. chance asterisk sign. <laughs> All right. The asterisk sign is because Baby if he lead, no, if he can lead the Chargers to a division winning team next year, given the schedule they have to play, yeah. he will win MVP. Because he has to not only go through his own division, which means he has to outscore the Chiefs twice, he's got to beat the Broncos' defense twice, and then who knows with the Raiders. And then, But he also has to go and he has to play Chicago. He has to go play the entire AFC South. So Jacksonville, a much improved Colts team, and the Houston Texans defense. Mm-hmm. And then there are two random teams, which are going to be, they finished, what, second in the division? Yeah. So that's going to be the Steelers, right? Don't forget Tennessee. 
The yep. Steelers are and... they in the South? The South, yeah. Yeah, oh. I'm not worried about Tennessee. Yeah. Fin- Tennessee's got a good second? Tennessee's got a good run defense, and that's about it. Yeah, that's so that's the best who, they've got to offer. Who finished in second there? Tennessee. The, no, no in Tennessee the, in, in the, the AFC East. East would be the probably. The I don't even know. Dolphins. Dolphins. Was it the Dolphins? Dolphins. Yeah. Man, they it fucked. certainly wasn't the Bills or the Jets. <laughs> so, not this yeah. year. So it's a, it's a tough road ahead. Yeah. Well, I think the Bills only missed it by a game because the Dolphins started off hot and then sucked. And then kind of the Bills consistently like won one loss too. So um. All right, so I, I do. I think Philip Rivers can make a case next year. I mean, well, he did it figure, this year. If, if, if the Chargers go 13-3 and three next year, that means you got to figure that... If they at least beat the Chiefs once, you would assume. They beat the Chiefs once. They beat the Broncos once. They had to have beaten out of these teams at least three of them when you consider Texans, Colts, um, Jacksonville, yeah. and Chicago. They had to beat three of them. Those yep. are all good defenses, very Absolutely. good defenses. So if, if if they can, you know, that's why I say, you know, it's it, a lot of it depends on how the, the team kind of finishes. Yeah, I I think it's very possible. I just don't think people look at and him all his weapons are coming back. I just don't. All his weapons are weapons are coming back plus some because you got to figure the year he had this year was without Hunter Henry. The year he had this year was his number one tight end option being a thirty eight year old Antonio Gates. Now think, he's got Hunter Henry coming Terrell back. Williams yeah. is coming back. I don't know, he's coming back. He's a free agent. I don't think they have the money to sign him. We'll have to wait and see. Whatever. So my, big, my next one loss. here, um, we talked about this guy briefly. Um, John Elway brought in Joe Flacco. But um, John Elway gets fired this season by the Broncos. Hmm. I will say 10% chance. I think there's some people who are kind of untouchable, no matter how well, can bad we, the can decisions can be. Can we be. reword it? Can we say like gets fired? Like, because like because if they if they make the playoffs, he's not getting fired. I I think so. Like like chances he gets fired if they miss the playoffs. Just just this season, however, the, if they sure if they miss the playoffs, whatever. Well, I'm saying because if you because well, the season we don't know how the season to play out. If they make the I playoffs, he's not getting Paul's fired. Saying. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's like, like well, that's yeah. like if, it's too hard go, for me to give a percentage because what if Patrick but, Mahomes tears his ACL and Philip Rivers tears his ACL? The Broncos are probably going to win the division, and then no, he's not going to get fired. So you know what I'm saying? Like it's there's two. So if like if they miss the playoffs, if like that's how you wanted to word it or whatever. However, like I kind of need specifics on how their season would finish. Well, see, I, I mean, I guess in my own, my own head, I figured it that if he's in danger of getting fired, they had a bad season. I Again. think I think your question should be. If Joe Flacco fails in Denver, does John Elway lose his job? I think if the Broncos miss the that's playoffs, that's the question. Sure. I think if the Broncos yeah, miss that, the that's... playoffs this year, John Elway has a ninety-five percent chance of being fired. I, I think he gets fired this season, and it, and it does come back to Flacco because John Elway's career, ultimately, so far in Denver, has been failed quarterback after failed quarterback after Peyton, failed he draft has, after failed draft. He has not been able to replace a Peyton Manning, who, by the way. Many people don't even think was even the best solution. The guy had like a million neck surgeries. He only gave them what? Was it three years? Four years? I think it was three and a half, maybe. <laughs> it wasn't a lot. I think it was three. It wasn't as I much as so. many people are thinking. Um, so if that's your entire legacy, is you're this great quarterback who's able to identify other great quarterbacks, yeah. and you're unable to do that one job, yeah, I think you can lose your job. I'll say seventy percent. But it has to be on the back of Joe Flacco. Absolutely. So Joe Flacco has to have some kind of success. I think if they go ten and six and miss the playoffs, I think they're okay. I think if they go nine and seven and miss the playoffs, I think he's okay. If Joe Flacco throws for like, say, twenty and twelve or whatever yeah. touchdowns to interceptions, but Joe Flacco has to be a decent to good quarterback. I, think I don't it, think anyone thinks he's going to be great anymore. I think, but he has to not give away games. Is it I Denver where people go to I die? I disagree. I think it, I think it relies. On, <laughs> I think Joe Flacco is the lower end of the percentage of it because they've had name me since Vaughn Miller, name me one draft pick that he's made. That's turned out good. Name me one head coach. He's hired with the exception of Gary Kubiak, who retired due to circumstances that turned out good for them. I mean, that's not his fault. That is his fault. He hired the head coach. You hired those head coaches, and they failed you. He accepted the job and then decided to retire. That's not on John Elway. (laughs) Who? That's not Gary Kubiak. That's no, not, not Gary. Elway. I said with the exception of Gary Kubiak. John Fox failed. Vance Joseph failed. This guy comes in, leads him to a six and ten team. That's it's on the coach more than anybody else. 
Because if Flacco goes out there in the first four weeks of the season and throws 15 interceptions, he's getting pulled. And if they, continue, if they continue to lose games, that's not on Flacco's play anymore. It's on the coach. His rookies that he's drafted time and again have been terrible. Cortland Sutton is the first bright spot in John Elway's drafting since Vaughn Miller. He has completely dismantled this team from what it used to be. The only reason that team won a Super Bowl was because Peyton Manning was there that one year to absolutely blow up the stats offensively with a defense that was playing well, went to the Super Bowl, lost. The defense came back hungrier and played harder and better than ever, and the offensive weapons around Peyton Manning put up great numbers from a pedestrian year from Peyton Manning and a very pedestrian Super Bowl. Yeah, he was bad in that Super Bowl. <laughs> the head coach, not good. <laughs> John Elway has not made any good decisions around Denver football at all. You and, mad, bro? <laughs> no, I'm just, I think that it goes much deeper than Flacco. My, I, my point is not even just Flacco. It's just the quarterback position as a whole, sort of exclusive and separate from everything else. As a guy who is supposedly a top 10 quarterback of all time, your one job as the GM is supposedly to be able to identify who these great quarterbacks are going to be. Every quarterback that he's brought in, not named Peyton Manning, has been an abysmal failure. So if Joe Flacco comes in and can't be even good, yeah, you're gone. But so has every coach he's brought in, with the exception of Kubiak. That's and not almost his ev- forte. I'm not saying that it excludes him from the conversation. Here's the thing. I'm saying if Joe Flacco is an abysmal saying. failure, Joe, like I that's on John Elway's Elway. position is the quarterback, and he should be able to identify the quarterback. But when you put on the GM hat, you accept coaching, quarterback, drafting, coordinators, everything. It all becomes your forte. You're and not if wrong. you don't do a good job at all of them, you get fired. And he's done a bad job at all of them, as equally as he's done bad at But has it been fired? But, but has it been fired? So that's my point. At some point, it has to become so let's too say, much for the franchise to take on anymore. If your position, Flacco tears his ACL in preseason, and they go, they go eight and they go eight and eight. Does he, he get keep, fired? No, he keeps his job. Why? Eight and eight is a, is a success at that point. If you lose the guy that you're going to spend all the money on to bring in, and you go eight and eight, you go five hundred. That's ultimately a success. Hmm. They should have kept though? Chad Kelly. He let Tebow go. That's why he should be fired. <laughs> I'll stand by it forever. We got Peyton Manning out of it. <laughs> I I think, I mean, if that team doesn't perform this year, Elway's got to go. I mean, he he's not good at evaluating talent, bringing in the proper people to get talent. It's just, he's not a good general manager. No, I agree. But, you know, there's this weird thing, and I kind of call it like the Marvin Lewis syndrome. There's certain people that somehow they get this fixation in an organization, and they somehow become like this this brain eating worm that has like control yeah. for, for so long and I feel like he's one of those people maybe he has like some incriminating photos of the people <laughs> but he's just he's somehow I think he's somehow protected no matter what he does he is more than just their GM is what you're saying he is also their public persona face yeah. because so, he's so good in front of a camera he's actually great in press conferences even when the team is not doing well he says and does the right things what makes you and think the team Flacco's accidentally uh, accidentally the team absolutely puts confidence in that yeah i mean the broncos are more than just a team they're a franchise they're a business they're a whole model just like the yankees are I think Flacco has a. I think Flacco has an above average season. The Broncos miss the playoffs and Elway. Yeah, what well, makes fired. you guys think he's going to do bad right off the no, bat? No, I don't. I think Flacco has an above average season. He's been resting for what three seasons. A, I'm not saying he's going to be elite. Well, let, let me I'm ask you what above a, average would be. Above okay, he's going to throw 29 touchdowns. He's going to throw just under 4,000 yards. He's going to throw 10 to, 10 to 12 interceptions. At, at that rate, I think that's exactly what the Broncos want to sign up for. I think that's okay. all that they want. I think that, he I think that, that John Elway does his job at that point, and I they're like, you've earned yourself that, but another year. that's not his job. That's not his job. His job is not Flacco coming in and playing good. His job is signing the right quarterback, drafting the right pieces to go around the quarterback on the defense, bringing in the right head coach to coach that team to the playoffs. That is a team that's got so much defensive talent that they have no business not making the playoffs. They have offensive talent. They've got defensive talent. They've got special teams. But he brings in wrong coach after wrong coach, makes bad draft after bad draft, and yes, bad quarterback decision after bad quarterback decision. But all of it 
gets wrapped together. I could very easily see Flacco going in, putting up those numbers, them finishing the season at seven and nine, and him still getting fired. I don't think the Broncos play this day of football, and I think they just suck because they can't do it. <sighs> they're I run, agree, no, I, no, they're run first football team. I can agree with okay? that. No, they don't I, have Flacco can air it out, that. but they don't have the receivers to air it out. Sutton's not a really a deep threat. You don't know where you're going to get out of Sanders because he's hurt still. So you got to go find a, another receiver because you traded Demarius Thomas. And that's in the draft this year, very weak at receiver. The free agency is very weak at receiver. So you're kind of stuck in the pact of we are run for first football team and they cannot win that way. That's why the Broncos will suck and John Elway will keep his job because there's no talent to make around Joe Flacco. But, but here's, again, as the GM position, to Paul's point, your job is to make the team better. Now, we've learned in today's NFL that the team starts with a great quarterback to even just above average at this point. If you have the right system and a great offensive line in front of a quarterback, you can have a very good offense. Which the Broncos do not. They do not they right have one now. one of the worst offensive lines in football. And they do not. how many offensive linemen have they drafted under Elway? I don't think many. Yes, they have. Like seven. And they have not panned out. Not even Garrett Bull, the first I'm seeing pick. terrible drafting. Look at the Chicago Bears. Ryan Pace has put together a team to completely surround Mitch Trubisky, who had an average season. Average Jeez. season. Behind a shaken offensive line that did its absolute best, and they, they managed to squeeze it together. But he put the pieces together defensively. And he brought in the right head coach, and he made the right draft choices, and therefore everyone's singing the praises of Ryan pra- Ryan Pace, regardless of how pedestrian Trubisky's numbers were and how spotty he played at the quarterback position. I just can't see the offense improving until they find other pieces for Flacco, because they're not going to find it this year. They're going to find it maybe next year or the year after. Not going to well, happen. This he, year. I don't think Flacco will be there next year and the year after. This Denver Broncos team coming this season and ultimately John Elway's job is going to depend on the play of Joe Flacco. That's just how I feel. I mean, this was the big play. This was this was his big play. They didn't see the quarterback that they wanted in the draft. They decided that we're going to go to the Baltimore Ravens. We're going to bring in a guy who's won a Super Bowl against us, by the way. He had to go through the Broncos. To win the Super Bowl that he won. We're going to get that guy. That doesn't always work out. We've seen the Yankees go after pitchers who pitched well against them. Jarrett Wright, anyone remember him? (laughs) Didn't do well with the Yankees. (laughs) Mark's face. I'm just saying, it doesn't always work out. So, if Joe Flacco comes in and doesn't work out, it's not going to work out for John Elway. If Joe Flacco comes in and he's average to good, I think that saves him at least a season. I don't think he's getting fired at the end of the season. If Joe Fl- even if they go six and ten, if Joe Flacco's okay to good, that's his job. His job is to make the team better. They were awful this year. They were awful. If they get better than they were this year, he's done his job. They beat the Steelers. Though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we kind of beat this one to, yeah. to a pulp. So, so my next one here, back to the MLB. Yes, we've seen the LA Dodgers in back-to-back World Series. Lost them both. They finally win the World Series next season. 12. 12%? Yep. Goose egg. Zero <laughs> percent chance from souls. I Absolutely like no shot. They I, I think I agree. I think they're done. I think their window has completely closed yeah. at I mean, this I point. I don't think they made the playoffs this year. Yeah, I was kind of leaning that way, too. I think they, they fall off. They almost didn't but... make it this year. <laughs> well, they might make the playoffs because the rest of the NL West got worse. <laughs> because Arizona... Lost Paul Goldschmidt. The San Diego Padres still suck. The Giants They could still have Manny su- Machado next year, though. They might. They, they, <laughs> might suck. they still suck. The Giants still suck. Um, to the, exactly what point Souls made, NL West got worse. Yeah. yeah. Worse. But I think there's still, like, we'll call it, I'm going to say a 20% chance because, you know, yeah, you make it in the wild card, you, you take the momentum the rest of the way. The Dodgers are banking off. Of the young players playing well, like Alex Vertigo to replace Yasiel Puig, um, 
They traded Matt Kemp, so the center field position is still kind of open. They have Jock Peterson, but he's known to bat 220. Mm-hmm. Whatever. So you got an outfield of uh, Vertigo, Peterson, and maybe Bellinger, but now your first base is open. So there's a lot of what if for the Dodgers, and the pitching staff is not as strong, but they traded Alex Wood to the Reds. I think the Dodgers fall off and at the deadline sell hard. They can't. They're, they're kind of built in because they still have Corey Seager. But, they have Corey but you Bellinger, can. So they're in. They've got a lot of young guys that they probably don't want to get rid of. I, I agree. Well, they can't pay all of them, so I think they're still going to be buyers. The and question already, is, are they going to have the options to buy at the trade deadline that they're going to need to get them to a championship? I don't think they do. But you, you just signed Clayton Kershaw to a bigger deal. Not not a crazy amount of deal, but a deal. You got to keep him. Yeah. They kept him. They yeah. did their job. But their sudden rotation is still iffy with, you know, Ryu, um, Rich Hill. Rich Hill's like 38. I was going to say, that guy's still playing? Everybody forgets like, how <laughs> old that guy is because he was out of the league for a couple of years. You got Ryu. Hugh Darvish is not there. But, like, I think he would be a good two for Kershaw right now. Because they're so hurt behind Kershaw. I think the Dodgers make the playoff because the rest of the division is still yeah. very weak. I, I don't disagree with that whatsoever. I think they make the playoffs, but maybe don't advance past the first round. Good. Tired of seeing them there. Why? Well, they just lose. Kyle's going to like this next one. Current Ravens starting quarterback, Lamar Jackson, rushes for over 1,000 yards next season. No shot. Teams are, are going to figure him out, and he's going to get fucked up. I'll say maybe 600, but 1,000 is a lot in one season. Teams are going to fuck him up. Hey, it took Tom Brady 18 years to do that. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to realize, hey, this guy can't throw the football. We're going to stack the box and play man, man-to-man coverage. 78. See, I, I think he can make a I run he's going to come out of the gate rushing a lot, and I think that teams are going to start doing what Soul said to him. And the thing that that Lamar Jackson has that like a Brock Osweiler doesn't mm-hmm. and like other young like not young quarterbacks but like quarterbacks that were trying to prove themselves at certain points and things like that. Lamar Jackson has shown that while the accuracy isn't there, he has a cannon and he has the touch to float a ball over a linebacker into a receiver's arms. He, there's a lot of fine-tuning that needs to be done. Not enough time this offseason to do all of it. Yeah. But enough to make it games winnable. And he's going to come out, and he's, I think he's going he's gonna to get lit up. He's going to have a game or two where he throws for 300. 300 to 310, like not blowing up the stats. Yeah. But yards like that with maybe a couple touchdowns and still squeaks a rushing touchdown in from the red zone or something like that. But how many fumbles? Mm-hmm. How many fumbles? That's a fair point. How many um, fumbles inside the pocket or like behind the line of scrimmage or past line of scrimmage? Oh, behind the line of scrimmage. Behind the line of scrimmage, four past at zero. <laughs> <laughs> I, I look at him as a less effective Donovan McNabb. And what was great about McNabb when he was really at the top of his game is when he would rush, he'd rush for the first down and immediately get out of bounds. He would never rush for really yeah. 20, 25 yards. It'd be 11, exactly. Let me get the one yard over the first down and get out of bounds. Because my job, ultimately, is to throw the ball for 20, 25, 30. I don't know that he knows that yet. I, I feel like his I also don't think mindset that... is going to be to run first, and I don't feel like in today's NFL I think Lamar... a successful recipe for but a But I think Lamar Jackson's more relatable to a Mike Vick than a Donovan McNabb. Donovan McNabb was a quarterback that could move, but wasn't... He had great footwork, but wasn't particularly fast. Lamar Jackson's fast. For a Mike. rushing quarterback at the time that he played, he was among the top five consistently. Top five what? Rushing what? quarterbacks. Like in terms I understand of like because he, he had amazing footwork and he knew how to make defenders <laughs> he, miss. He could, but he wasn't but... fast, is what I'm saying. So for him to rush, get the first down, and run out of bounds, avoid the hit, because he like that was the thing for him to do. I just Lamar think it's a Jackson, smarter quarterback play. L- Lamar Jackson. It's it's not that it's smarter, it's just knowing the type of quarterback you are. Lamar Jackson, much like Michael Vick, Michael Vick didn't run out of bounds because Michael Vick knew that 10 yards coming down the line, there was going to be a safety and a cornerback closing in on him, and he knew he had the speed to get there first, to yeah. beat them. Lamar Jackson has to decide if he's got that speed or not. 
And I think Lamar Jackson does have that speed. I think it's a different style of running quarterback. I think we're going to make him throw a lot more. And the team's going to be like, hey, they ran the ball 900 times against us. Let's try and, like, blitz everybody. Donovan McNabb, for me, was a more, like, rush, rush-friendly rush version of, like, a Ben Roethlisberger. Because Ben Roethlisberger has good footwork. It's hard to bring down. Like, Don, yeah. Donovan McNabb was a big guy. Dude, that guy he used was, to be able to move. He is so slow now. But, like, Don, <laughs> but I'm saying, like, in, in Donovan McNabb's prime... Big guy, great footwork, could dance around in the pocket forever, could move laterally outside the pocket all day, and when he decided to take off, had amazing footwork, could make a defender miss first, get the first down, get past line scrimmage or whatever, and go out of bounds. That's what Ben Roethlisberger did when he decided to run. He he made the smart run, he took the smart route, and he got out of bounds at the first opportunity. Because that's the type of quarterback that they were in terms of running the football. Yeah, that guy's so fat. No, I don't think he rushes for over a thousand yards. See, I, I think he can flirt with it. He may not go, but I think he can get near it. Like eight, okay, then eight. how many passing yards? But but here's the thing, Kyle. No, I'm asking you, how many passing yards? Two hundred. I think he can finish <laughs> the season over thirty five hundred passing yards. Dude, there's no shot. There's no talent on that team. Besides, but, but listen, but listen, to line. You're oh, you're talking. Oh, no, 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 Kyle. I uh, I understand. It's the wrong receiver. He's the wrong receiver for that team. But I refuse to have you sit on this microphone and tell me that Michael Crabtree has no talent. Sit I'm in front saying, of yours so we no, can no, no, hear no, no, you. No, I don't care what you're saying. I, what I'm you saying said, as a Baltimore no, no, Raven. No, 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 no I, I'm going to say what I want to say. I'm making a point. I'm me too. We no, can't hear you. you. You said they have no talent, so I'm rebuttaling it. I refuse to sit here and let you tell me that Michael Crabtree has no talent. He's the wrong receiver for that team. He drops he, a lot of passes in order for Lamar Jackson to be able to give him the number one option. He's the wrong receiver for that team. And what he, I'm trying to say is, my point was, they don't have any talent to go with Jackson. That's not what you said first. They have the though. wrong running backs. That's not what you said first. You said okay, they have you, no talent on that team besides the offensive line. They have the, they have the wrong running backs. Are, are you them, changing your point? Is that what you're doing then? You know what I'm saying. Well, I'm just saying Michael Crabtree's talent. Okay, yes. Because Michael Crabtree made a killing in San Francisco and in Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Uh, Oakland. Oakland. <laughs> Which, which is the Oklahoma of the California. <laughs> he played for Texas. Sorry. We've lost Pete. Somebody bring up the Daytona 500. <laughs> <laughs> My thing is, he will not be successful in Baltimore. In Lamar Jackson. I think teams have already figured him out after that Charger game. And he's going to have a very tough year next year. See, I, I, I agree with you to an extent. I think teams figured him out after the Chargers game. But I don't think there's many teams in the NFL that have the personnel to do what the Chargers did. Because the Chargers put safeties as linebackers, and there's not enough NFL teams. you got to figure that they're going to play. How many teams are they going to play next year? They play what? They play, you play your division, what, six times altogether? Yeah, two so, each. So you play 13 teams in total. You play 13 NFL teams in total. There is not, I don't, there's not even 13 teams in the NFL that have the ability to drop two safeties to play linebacker and then keep two Good enough safeties to actually play safety but also in case the, he rips the schedule it down the that field. He has to face next year. No shot. Belichick here, will figure him out. We'll here, figure him here's out. my reasoning. Here's my reasoning, Kyle. Now you you, okay. you say Belichick. Lamar runs first, which is true. So if you consistently rush seven, eight guys to to prevent him from running, that's going to open up, especially in man coverage, quick short throws to bail him out. If he can hit him, that's the big question. See, if he can hit him. And he can't. He cannot do that consistently. I'm sorry. But my I, I opinion, agree. he cannot do it. I agree he doesn't have the accuracy. But he's still an NFL quarterback who can throw the a, a seven-yard slant. Mark, I just wanted to know, there's like a weird family like group yeah, chat going on. Are you part of this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Too. Did you see the picture that was just? Oh, you are too? Hold on. Hold on. Don't, don't, don't do this. <laughs> there's, a picture, there's, a, there's a picture of me kissing you that just got sent to okay. me. Okay. No, you got to look um, at So... It, I mean, any NFL quarterback can hit that five to seven yard slant pad, and that's all he's going to need to bail him out. I do think they need to get a different receiver to help him out, but I, I can see him making those quick throws to get out of taking bad sacks like he did this year and fumbling, but he's still going to run. I think he's a dumb quarterback. <laughs> God, that's because he's a Raven. No, I think he's just it's like he's a Raven. He's a dumb, dumb quarterback. <laughs> How many more questions do we have? I got one more. One more. I got right. one more. One more. We'll and this one break. I think is going to go quick. I did one NBA one, and it just I keep kind of seeing the headline float around and everything. But next season, Clay Thompson is a Los Angeles Laker. Zero percent. I will say, eleven percent chance. 
Riddler? Zero percent. Phil? Yeah, I don't see it because he's going to command too much money. I think if the Lakers are going to need talent players, they're going to have to be on the cheap. Yeah, He's not going to be on the cheap. I'm going to say low, 5%. I'm, I'm going to go with a different answer. I think he's going to be cheap for the Warriors. I think he's willing to stay with Golden State for a way less money. Not the question! <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 agree, I agree with Souls. Yeah. Kevin Durant's not going to be there next year. I expect Kevin some... Durant is a Los Angeles Laker. <laughs> I expect Kevin Durant's some, gonna be a Nick. Some sort of turn from Clay where he's like, you know what? I want to be the guy no. and be no. the guy behind LeBron. <laughs> no, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be that he wants to be the guy. It's just my thing is is he's either gonna take the pay cut and be the cheap option for the Warriors, or if Kevin Durant leaves, get the money he's looking for from the Warriors. Either way. But he's either gonna be a warrior or he I just don't see him going to the Lakers because what are the Lakers doing this year besides nothing? And adding Clay Thompson to the mix is going to make them at best a five seed. Why go from a one seed to a five seed? It doesn't it make cool any though, sense. Just because the Warriors would be like a six seed without Kevin Durant and Clay Thompson. I think Clay Thompson is the most important part of that Warriors team. I agree with you, Paul. But the thing is, Clay Thompson is the best all around player on that team. I honestly think that Clay Thompson takes the deal before the season's over, but it's eighty million dollars cheaper. If he signs a contract before next year, it's like a hundred and five mil for the max. If he waits, it's a hundred and eighty. I think he waits, takes it, so they can have the opportunity to sign Kevin Durant. Quick, quick little follow up. If he doesn't resign with the Warriors, Kendall, where does Clay Thompson play next season? Uh, I don't have a team for you, but somewhere really bad. Cleveland, Chicago. Who who do you think though? Like if you had to throw a team out there, Chicago. If I were to throw a team, um, for for no reason at all, Atlanta. Fair enough. For no reason at all. If he's gonna go, if he's gonna go to a a bad team, I think it's gonna be Chicago. They have all the money in the world to throw at him. Chicago needs perimeter defense. Chicago needs shooting. Chicago can give him the money, and Chicago has the youth talent to offer. To go with it. First of all, I don't think he goes to a bad team. I think if he doesn't wind up back with the Warriors, I think the perfect fit for him is actually Milwaukee. Because Chris Middleton might not come back. Antler combo. Might not be there. So they could they have some money to spend. They have someone that they want to put next to Big G. He could be that perfect guy. I, I think, think that's Houston. a perfect spot for him. I think Houston. <laughs> with what money? <laughs> They, they, they had, dumped they, so much cap space. Did they? Yeah, and they, with they, James they Harden, who lot. loves that to pass the ball. That was the whole trade deadline game mock. Oh, that's right. So you'll have Chris <laughs> Paul, you'll have James Harden, and you have Quay Thompson, who can play the three. He can, he's a very, very and underrated defender. actually adds, you know, like a little bit of outside-the-paint defense to that team. And he does exactly what everyone else does, shoot threes. So he would just fit right in with their scheme. And they would probably win the championship because I – the Warriors are going to suck without him. I think Milwaukee could be the sneaky, like, They're getting Anthony free Davis. agent destination. Yeah. They're getting Anthony Davis. I do think so. <laughs> so if we can, real quick before break, what, what about an around the horn? Yeah, around one the more horn? around the horn. I'm no. done. All right. I actually, I haven't I'm even got it sure yet. I'm that's on everybody's All bingo right. sheet. <laughs> Just a quick thing. So I'm the only one that's allowed to say that. <laughs> Just a quick thing. Um, I'm on. Quick, quick question. Where do you think Machado ends up? Just a team. Just say. You know, that's on, I'm pretty sure that's on Kyle's. <laughs> Just say the team. Just say the team. I don't you know care. We do this like every two weeks. Like, <laughs> oh, so where's Machado yeah, going? Yeah, I'm so tired of it. <laughs> no, where, where do you think Machado's going? Philadelphia. San Diego. You're high. <laughs> San Diego. Supposedly the offer's on the table and he doesn't want it. Oh, he wants $300 yeah, million. This place is a dump. Harper wants the, Harper wants the length. Machado wants the money. I, I think as much as I don't want it to happen, he's going to end up on the Yankees. I don't think the Yankees have a place for him. I think they signed too low. I think they're sticking with Didi. Yeah, but, but I mean, like, you could very easily just say, fuck you, Tulo. You can ride the pie <laughs> pony and be the utility guy. And I mean, you're not going to be like, oh, God, we have Tulo and Machado. What are we going to do? You can also say to Tulo, hey, we don't really have a first baseman. We have half a Greg Bird and yeah. whoever the fuck this Luke Voigt guy is. Uh, like, like, why don't you go Greg try Bird. to play <laughs> first Bird. base? You know what, though? They could try that. I never thought about Troy playing first. That would probably save his career. Probably. Uh, he'd get hurt. <laughs> no. 
He'd get hurt. Do what? He's got glass wrists, man. Glass wrists. He, he had a foot injury last year. Yeah, last year? Yeah, that side effect is glass wrists. <laughs> But yeah, we, like, we got to take a break. <laughs> he actually, the, no, the reason he can't play first base is because he spent he, he spent six hours visiting one of his good friends. I don't know why they're friends, but they're friends. He spent six hours during his recovery time visiting his boy Todd Frazier, and they hung out at City Field, and now he can't ever play again because he's injured forever. <laughs> he caught the bug. All right, we'll be back in five minutes. Kendall, play us off. And now, back to getting sports with Drunk on the PPRN Radio Network. Welcome back to Getting Sports with Drunk. I'm your host, Cupcake the Riddler, and I'm joined by... Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Only Kyle. <laughs> Only That's Kyle, it. an imaginary appliance voice. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we're still joined by the normal assholes, as well as special guest Phil from the Chaz and AJ Show. Phil and I, the science oh, guy. No! And that was clipping. <laughs> uh, that I'm Can we get that in the intro? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, also, we're also joined by our fearless leader, Mr. Peter Pinho. Yeah. Be sure to check out the Peter Pinho Show Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 30 ish. Tuesdays and Wednesdays. What did I say, Thursdays? Yeah. yeah it's whatever. You can stream it on Thursdays if you want on the app. You could. That's the right. PPRN Radio app. Motherfucker. Right. See what is it there? Shameless yeah. plug. You can watch but, the videos back before yeah. you take them down. Right. Listen to the Peter Pinho Show <laughs> well, Tuesdays you know and Thursdays. Go ahead. No, I, I have to say something. No, ch- check out the Peter Pinot shows Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Wednesdays. See, you fucked me up. Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 7.30-ish to 10.30-ish. And Thursdays. Cleveland motherfucking brown, motherfucker. <laughs> Trump hates him. No, he don't. He does. They hate Family Guy. They don't hate Cleveland show. <laughs> Had to readjust How can they hate all Family my... Guy, though? It's a Fox thing, isn't it? Did Fox... you see the rendition of... I no. can't. Yeah, no, I saw it. I even, saw the even I fell out of love with Family Guy for that day. I'm back though. Oh, you can't. You can't <laughs> I'm back. back. No, you it was ever, actually funny the way they. they you they, ever they, watched they, F is for Family on Netflix? It's no. fantastic. Bill Burr, it's so good. Bill Burr's show. No, watch it, dude. Watch it. Get on that. It's amazing. I promise you, you will never view adult cartoons the same again. <laughs> it's excellent. It makes Family Guy look PG. I can't get over the fact that the guy from Bob's Burgers is Arby's. <laughs> and Ar- and Archer. And Archer, too. And Carl from Family Guy, the glass station attendant. Oh, is he? That same guy. His voice does not match his face. Nope. Thank you for the plug, though. I appreciate that. Tomorrow we have the Soldiers of Solace, the band, uh, upcoming band from Connecticut, who uh, they're actually going to be playing That's with great, Pete. Hour three, beer three. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Ah. Hey, you know, I'm he, tired of you giving me crap right. over there. I'm trying to accommodate your YouTube rules. I have to redo my whole setup for dead air <laughs> shit. Our Sit whole professionalism went out the door the day Phil came in here. It's like, we got to show Phil how professional we are. Then we had dead You've air. you done a fantastic <laughs> job. <laughs> we had dead air. Right, to accommodate your YouTube rules, you czar. <laughs> hey, you want to make it on the fucking feed? Don't otherwise play music. I don't care. <laughs> we could just for a second talk about how terrible alpacas are. <laughs> They're just really <laughs> terrible animals. Just like a fucking <laughs> emu burger. Put, put Rita's mic on. Does she have something to say? To Who eats an to? emu burger? Yeah, it's besides middle, prisoners. It's, it's just emus are fingers. different. <laughs> emus. <laughs> emus are... Rita, Rita. Yeah, this is your time. Paul, to you're, so you got to talk it to the mic, Paul. But does Kendall think I have to there talk to the go. mic? There you go. Emus are a less impressive ostrich. Ooh. We're talking about alpacas. What do you want? You to said about emu. That? About uh, uh, wait, I said she's off. She's off. Hold on. No, no, no. Put her back. Hold on. Wait a second. I didn't take her off. Hold What's on. better, alpacas or llamas? Alpacas. Why? Because they're fuzzier and they have a better disposition. No, 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 no. no. And their this ball is, sacks hang this, <laughs> this is getting sports with drunk, not getting sports with alpacas slash llamas. This makes me want I, McDonald's. I want you... Kind of. Her like, mom hates alpacas because they're allowed, Middle Eastern. No squares are allowed to be marked <laughs> off for that one. <laughs> My dad today... Hates fa- them too. <laughs> he found a YouTube video no, with, no, no, I with, don't a, want this. with a GoPro attached to an alpaca and you is follow dad, it around for the your day. Your dad listening today by any chance? Yes, he is. Is he tuned in to Facebook Live? Not yet. Is he eating a Big Mac? No. <laughs> you can't watch face right. YouTube on a flip phone. <laughs> We're moving on. Rita, thank you for your contributions. You're welcome. Hey, but, oh, real quick. Don't take her off the air yet. Is how's, your mom on? How's school going? No. How's school going? God, just... I love I it. Like baiting huh? baiting these... I like wrestling. You do like the WWE? Any What do you think of the Elimination Chamber? Kendall, 
Just real quick. Hey, hey, hey. I'm talking. I gotta, I gotta My say something. My favorite color though. is green. Rebecca must live in Alaska because she's the only car in Connecticut with snow on it still. No, no, no. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Is that yours? You Rita, yeah. I'm gonna, Rita, I'm going to ask you three wow. questions, and I need you to answer them truthfully, okay? What's better, alpacas or llamas? Are any of these squares? What's Who's better, square? alpacas or llamas? He's not allowed to lead. There's gay, there's gay llamas? I'm not allowed to lead. I'm just asking questions. <laughs> What's better, alpacas <laughs> or llamas? Alpacas. She answered that. What did that. you think of the elimination chamber last night? Overall grade. Give it a, give it a letter grade. Wrestling's gay. Paul, what's your theme song? B. Okay. That's and not bad. I wanted to know how, how school's going. How's your job teaching? Great. Is now, it going well? Yes. Do you like the school you're at, yes or no? <laughs> what, yes. what school are you teaching at? Can you say that on there? No. All right, what school are you not teaching at? <laughs> Name them all. <laughs> Detroit Paul. City High. Paul, Paul, right, I'll right. tell you what Paul. school she's not going to be teaching at is the one she mentions on the air. What's your favorite right. theme song? My favorite theme song? <sighs> See, it's hard to remember all the squares. <laughs> <sighs> Drake and Josh theme song? No. no. Souls, you want to sing it real quick for us? Are we talking TV? Wrestling? What are we talking? We're, we're, we're talking your favorite. What do you like to... What comes out of your mouth the most? So, <laughs> semen. Vomit. <laughs> what kind semen. of Semen. No, I swallow because I'm not a bitch. <laughs> I'm, pretty sure there, I'm pretty sure there's a uh, going off topic square, so I hope that's been marked off. <laughs> 1019. We have officially gone off the rails. <laughs> Mark, do it for him. You guys all have the ability to text me. I don't know why anybody's not. <laughs> so, anyway. So, Law and order, right? What? Dun-dun. All right, that was terrible. <laughs> Do it. Kyle, fuck off. I'll buy McDonald's. <laughs> you don't get to mark that square off. Why would I you buy the so competitor? All right, I'm not a competitor. <laughs> I, I don't get anything. Because no. he works at Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he buy the competitor? I'm lost, guys. I'm <laughs> lost. <laughs> Kyle's is a right. manager. All right, all right. We I don't the... know where we are. Oh, Kyle's the manager at Burger King. I'm always, on beer I, three, and I'm lost. I always wonder why I don't wear the headphones. Give me that news Everyone 12 talks bottle. at one time. I don't remember why. <laughs> no, give me that news 12 bottle. No. Yeah. Can you just do the law and order theme did song? You, did you drink any of that? Yeah, I did. You did. I didn't see it. He took the top off. You know what? Around the horn. He it would be nice to have another around the horn. He took the top off because there's too many male germs on. Come on, oh, dude. Oh, that's actually funny because I'm I was female when I was twelve. That's <laughs> hilarious. So we are doing He's Riddler's doing rankings. If you tuned in last week, good for you. We appreciate the the consistent listening. If you didn't tune in last week, then screw you. No. <laughs> No, I'm just we appreciate our listeners. Then Anytime they tune in, your welcome. First you time. ginger exactly. fuck. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you saying here? That you're a ginger fuck. Rebecca but must taste that's right. it. We are doing, for Riddler's ranking for the next, I don't know, 30,000 weeks, it's pretty much set in. We're going to do a the top five, in my opinion, sports figures per city. Um, the criteria is you must have at least three major sports teams in your city. New York was the exception, so was Chicago. We took care of Chicago last week. So, with that being said, I believe somebody at this table, I don't want them to say it's me, or whatever, I believe somebody at this table has a square on their, their bingo sheet, I only put one square, if you could guess what city Riddler's Rankings was going to be. So, everybody gets to take a guess, Rita, put your mic on, because she gets, she gets a guess, because she's part of the bingo game, so everybody gets to take a guess, I would like Phil to lead it off. Say again, please. The guess for the city of the top five sports figures from that city. So guess a city in the United States, a major city that has at least three sports teams in it. At least three. Yeah, of the three of the four major sports. Springfield. I mean, in the last fifteen years. No, I no, to no, say it. no, no, no. Like just name a city. Random. Totally. No, random. no, no. You have I, to say You'd have to say Boston. No, no, no. The the uh, ranking is I'm ranking the five best players from that city's franchises. Of all time. Milwaukee. So, like, Boston, <laughs> Los Angeles, Atlanta. Of all time. From di- No, no, no. Different cities. Like, a different city every week. Pa- Paul's so, doing the rankings. I'm ranking. Pick we're, a we're city guessing with a lot city of black that. people. So last, last week, I ranked the top five athletes from Chicago sports of all time. Okay. This week, I'm doing a different city. Okay. Guess that Guess city. the city. Oh! Any city. Kansas now I City. You're not no. up, Peter. <laughs> You're not up. <laughs> now it's Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> it's, it's Chicago. No, I guessed Chicago last week. I don't fucking know. I All wasn't right, so here last week. Phil doesn't uh, have a guess. Please don't swear. Hit the dumb Red, button. Red <laughs> Baron. <laughs> Red, Baron <laughs> Red Baron, guess the city. Let's say Seattle. Okay. No. They don't have left. three major sports teams, but that's your guess. That's not true. They don't. Super they Sonics. Seahawks. They, they, have the, they have the Mariners, and they have the Seahawks, and that's it. 
A supersonic move? Supersonic for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Oh. Philadelphia. Don't they have a hockey okay. team? Nope, not yet. Not until 2021. I really take your, your city course. crown. Yeah. Oh, hold on, Rita. No, 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 no. We're going by team. So my oh, team. okay. Los Angeles. Baltimore. Okay. Can I repeat or no? I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> you did an amazing job, Rebecca. Pick an obscure city. Whatever Oklahoma. city you'd be most Oklahoma uncomfortable. Oklahoma Wallingford. Houston. Wallingford. Okay. Houston's pretty good. <laughs> New York. Right. Nobody got it. Houston's too easy. Nobody got it. Today's Riddler's rankings are the top five athletes from Detroit. Ah, I get that close. Was, that's that racist. Second choice. Sure, I tried to throw it in there. That's so racist. I get it. Name a city you'd be uncomfortable in. Can we do a city that has good water, please? Wow. Wow. He's talking about me today. Me. <laughs> what? I missed somebody. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Paul. A couple honorable mentions. Peter knows. That's all that matters. We had a water crisis. A couple (laughs) honorable mentions to start uh, from the Detroit Pistons. Isaiah Thomas from the Detroit Red Wings. Ted Lindsay from the Detroit Tigers. Hank Greenberg. And from the Detroit Lions, Bobby Lane. Also, I wanted to put in uh, Joe Lewis. Um, The only reason I didn't put him in my top – he would be in my top five, but we focus on the four major sports, football, baseball, football, baseball, hockey, and basketball – Joe Lewis is a boxer. For those of you who don't know, he boxed. Um, he's from Detroit. He boxed from 1937 to 1949. He was a very impactful member of the African American community during that time, especially in the Detroit area, um, which has always been very rich in culture with um, that ethnicity. You know, a lot of stuff going on there. So, you know, I didn't want to exclude him from being mentioned, but we focus on the four major sports here. So, I wanted to give him his dues. So. Starting off the rankings, at number five, Steve Yeserman. Stevie from, Y! Anybody care to guess based off that name? Hockey. Yep. Detroit <laughs> Red Wings. He's a three-time Stanley Cup champion. Motherfucker. <laughs> he, played in the, he played from the 90s to the early 2000s. He broke the big struggle the Detroit Red Wings had um, from making Stanley Cup not only appearances, but winning. Um, but... Uh, he won three championships in the two in the late nineties or one in the early two thousands. He was a big part of the the kind of the rebranding of the Detroit Red Wings, especially as an original six team. That's a big deal. Um, so, kudos to him. At number four, Barry Sanders. Um, I find four. It, oh, Barry Sanders by far for Detroit sports is number four. I struggled. Four. I struggled to not put him five. To be honest with you, too bad he's um, than Never won a Super Bowl, obviously. But not his title. Fault. one of the few two thousand yard rushers in a season also rushed for fifteen hundred yards for four straight seasons. I believe he's the only running back to ever do that. Lost to Emmett. Um, <laughs> he retired early. Otherwise, would have destroyed a record that was stood by Walter Payton and never would have been broken by Emmett. Um, Whatever. It would have never been broken by Emmett. If he, Barry Sanders, did he break it? If Barry Sanders, did he break it? If Barry did Sanders he break played it? a full career, Does he have a show, trophy in his house. Would Emmett have broken if he didn't go to the Cardinals and retired like a true athlete? He didn't no, do it. he did it because, like all Cowboys, he's a huge pussy. Um, but his, anyway, what's his trophy case say? His trophy case? Sorry, mm-hmm. what happened what? to the golf clap? <laughs> I had to clap louder for that one. I hate some, the Cowboys. Some his his trophy case. I'm pretty sure it says, "This is my trophy case." Asterisk. All the trophies on the bottom. Thank God for Troy Aikman. Anyway. <laughs> um, so Barry Sanders, like I said, won a few 2000 yard rushers in his career. I'm pretty sure he's the only player to ever rush for 1500 yards in four straight seasons was the absolute shining light in that Detroit lions team during his time span retired way too early, but due to just the nature of the game at that time, a ground and pound guy getting beat up all the time, getting hit and bruised and battered and injured and playing on a team that was going nowhere. He, he hung up the laces early and but he was still one of the most electrifying running backs ever and arguably the greatest running back of all time. Why is it when it comes to anything Cowboys, when they do good, you guys want to just tear them down? They suck ass. Whatever. So, on to number three. Don't ignore me. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you <laughs> I'm what. not ignoring you, Kyle. You just did. No, I didn't. Toothpick Souls chimed in. Show I'll me your toothpick. We'll have to save this discussion because I want, I want Riddler to complete his rankings, but in a second. Right. It's uh, n- 90s Cowboys fans are the reason why. What? Yeah, well, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. We're Number not three. bitter. Number this three. is not the time. Al <laughs> Kaline. Number three, Al Kaline from the Detroit Tigers. Won a World Series as a rookie. 
was is regarded still to this day as the best defensive player in American League history. Had an absolute cannon of an arm. Still leads all time stats. Some all time stats in defensive hit, uh, categories. And had a career batting average of three hundred. Plus, not to mention, like I said, brought a World Series to the Tigers in a time when Detroit sports were kind of in a slump. So that brought a lot of life to Detroit City. This is, like I said, this is where the rankings is, is it's most important to the city. So right. that that stuff kind of matters. Yeah. Um, number two, Ty Cobb. Ugh. Uh-oh. Phil, save it. Save it till after. No, I'd like him to explain well, that. Well, he wants, he wants to talk about the other uh, K-line, too. Continue. No, I want to know now. This is my rankings. I have the. Oh, I have a all. Huge Indian yes. Fan. So continue. We'll we'll finish and we'll, we'll and we'll continue. Yeah, please. I want to hear about okay. this nine. Ty Cobb had twelve <laughs> batting titles, had four thousand career hits, and had a batting average for his career of three seventy. I need a sticker from GSP. Um, I mean, Ty Cobb is regarded to as one of the best baseball players of all time. Ty Cobb also, on an unrelated note, not really important to the city, but Ty Cobb also is the owner. Of the most expensive baseball card in history. The original Ty Card Cracker Jack baseball card sells for over $700,000. Wow. If you can find one. Oh, I think I have one in a box. You don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> dig, dig, one, dig. Number one is Gordy Howe. Thank you. That's definitely number one. From the Detroit Red Wings. Um, it's kind of hard to not put somebody as number one when he's referred to as Mr. Hockey. He's a four-time Stanley Cup champion. Okay. Not to mention he played thirty or uh, 27, 27 seasons, twenty-five full seasons over the span of five decades. He retired and came back thirteen years, like like thirteen years later, or something like that. He played in five different decades, which is absurd. And he he was just one of the all-around best hockey players to have ever played the game. Um, you know, he he had. The unfortunate, like many hockey players, Mario Lemieux, you know, maybe down the line, like a Sidney Crosby, uh, Bobby Hall, players like that, that they have the unfortunate of having Wayne Gretzky that played in their league, who will argue, will never arguably be the best player of all time in their sport. Just never. He's the best athlete of all time. Yay. What about Miguel Cabrera? Nope. What about talking to the mic? Yeah. So, like, can we just talk about uh, this? Hockey? So, um, I looked at. I, I understand what you're saying about Mel Cabrera, Mel, Miguel Cabrera. <laughs> when I made my original top, so when I do these, what I do is I make a top five rankings based off my knowledge of the sports, right? So when I made my knowledge of the sports, I had Gordy Howe as one. I had Ty Cobb in there. I had Miguel Cabrera. I had Barry Sanders, and I had Al Kaline. Okay. Then what I do is I go and I look at as many sports rankings as I can for. The city. I go to Google and just type in top Detroit athletes all time. And I look as many as I can. And I don't think a single one had Miguel Cabrera above nine. Well, my, my, my personal opinion, uh, he's a triple crown winner. Mm-hmm. He brought baseball back to Detroit. I understand. Because while, before he got there, they were a 115 lost team. Yeah, they were bad. So, like, him alone brought the Tiger back to the World Series. Right, and I understand that, but you talk like that all go time. based off of. Yep. So, the, in my opinion, the only person that he can beat on this list, based off the achievements that you gave, is Barry Sanders. Is he's more? Is he more important to Detroit sports than Barry Sanders? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not no, being a dick. I'm asking your in opinion. In my opinion, in that in that aspect, yes. Okay. He's so he's not. Be- I don't think he's more important than Steve Yersman, three time champ, and broke a very long. Championship drought for the Red Wings, an original six team, Al Kaline, World Series, and regarded as the best defensive American League player all time in baseball, still to this day. And Ty Cobb, is he better than Ty Cobb? See, personally, I don't know. That, just because I haven't seen him. Well, so I understand I, that. I, I 370 remember. batting uh, average for a career. But it's different. 370, different bat, 370 career, but I understand, but 370 career batting average over 20 years for a career. I would like to see Miguel Cabrera's stats now. But I believe a three seventy back then, it's like a three thirty now. I but even, a, but even still, a three thirty for twenty about years in is... his prime. Not not the last few seasons because he's been hurt. I'm talking about triple crown and before. I'm looking at Miguel, Miguel Cabrera's stats right now. Because my thing is, is that he's the sole reason why people wanted to go to Detroit Tigers. 
and that's but, why they were able to get those guys and become a World Series team. But see, you you can't kind of pick and choose the seasons you take from his career. Like he yeah, had the triple. But what I mean is, you can't discount everything after the triple crown. You can't. You can't, Kyle. That was like six because years he ago. He started off red hot before he got hurt this year. But the but, triple crown was like it, six years ago. But it's over the course of their careers. I mean, the, these guys that I listed played their entire careers pretty okay, much with these teams. Then look it up. Then look it up. Man. No, Miguel Cabrera for a career batted three has batted three sixteen, and he had stretches of three twenty four, three twenty eight, three forty four, three thirty, three forty eight, three thirteen, three thirty eight, and then dipped down into the two hundreds after that. I'm not taking anything away from that, not by any means, but I forgot the exact year that the Marlins traded him, but that's but as soon as they got him, they got a. Superstar. Oh, three year, right? I wasn't that year because he that was his rookie year. No, I'm saying that he was in the O O three. He, he was in O three Marlins. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. He got traded. He, he fact, got traded in O seven. He started. He played the O eight season for the. Fun trade. fact: He was a left fielder for the Marlins. It's only fun for you. <laughs> Real fun. I'm having a blast, look, bro. I, 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 look, I like this. I know, know, I, I just no, I'm just gonna stop talking. I oh, want, on, I so want, no, I want this ball. kind of input. I like the debate. That's the whole point of these things because it gives, you know, Shut over, up, the, souls. over the course of four different sports, it I, gives, you know, I mean, in my top five, there were no Pistons. Isaiah Thomas was an honorable mention, but I don't think anybody on the Pistons history is as important as these five guys. If we're talking fighting, Bill and Beer deserves it. <laughs> and honestly, I mean, Dennis Rodman was yeah. a very important part of that team. Um, I may have missed in your honorable man. Did, was Verlander anywhere near there? No. 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 He Carl, was thank not. you for tuning in. See, Carl Justin from Verlander's Tennessee. tough. And I'm going to say because uh, is he, yeah. his first three or four seasons, he was very dominant. And then he fell off for a while. Yeah. And then he got That's traded fair. to the Houston Astros where he took I think off if, again. I think if Verlander plays the rest of his career as an Astro, he'll be more remembered as an, as Astro, an Astro than he will as That's a Tiger. That's fair. That's fair. But in just my opinion, how? <laughs> But like in my opinion, I think Miguel Cabrera literally brought the tiger from beneath to the top. Like I said, I understand what you're saying. So what I do is I like I said I make the top five and then I put some honorable mentions in. So I kind of make a top ten based off of my knowledge who I think is most important. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, for, for at number ten I had Matt Stafford because even though he hasn't done anything in terms of winning a championship, Matt Stafford is continuously putting up record-breaking numbers for the Lions franchise. He's took them to the postseason before, you know, from a team that was 0-16 to a team to make the postseason, even at any point. I mean, that's great. You figure if you're 0-16 and you make the postseason within five years, you had a good turnaround. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you look at the history of the organization of the Chicago Bears and the Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings. It's a very historic division that knows how to draft and knows how to – so about a guy that got hit like every other play, <laughs> right? And you look at a guy that outside of Calvin Johnson has had nothing so, for his entire career. So, like I said, I had Matt Stafford at number ten. Yeah. I had you know, and then after that, I had my honorable mentions, and I had people like Verlander and stuff like that. But I look at as many top ten rank or top rankings as I can, and I kind of I don't say for lack of a better term, average them out from there. Yeah. Based off of professional standpoints, because these, you know, some of the guys, like the guy who wrote the article, is a guy that saw and commentated hockey during um, Steve Yersman's hockey play <laughs> in the late nineties. <laughs> Obviously, I wasn't old enough to comprehend what yeah. hockey was, like what he did for that franchise at the time. I was old enough to comprehend what team was winning. You know he what I'm saying? He didn't play a long time, did he? Yeah. Yeah. Stevie he did from Y, ninety two, like the early two thousands. Stevie Y, he did. He played a long time. When did he officially retire? Eighty three to two thousand six. Oh, he started eighty three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, he played a long fucking time, man. You said the nineties. I was like, no, no, no. He won. He brought competitive hockey back for the Red Wings okay. from like we'll call it ninety five to to the end of his career. They were consistent playoff contenders. Okay. And every won, single year from that year And he won three championships forward. in that time Understood. Frame. Yeah, man. The stuff. Which, and, and the thing for that is, is that it's Can not... Can I hear the top five in, in, in order once again, please? From from one to five? Yeah. Gordy Howe, Ty yeah. Cobb, Al Kaline, Barry Sanders, Steve Yersen. If Cabrera got a ring, would he have made that list? Yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah. 
if, if Cabrera made a ring, Cabrera, in my opinion, if Cabrera made, won a ring based off of everything else he did yeah. as a Tiger, he would have gone to four, Sanders would have fell to five, and Yersman would have been out. Okay. Now, what if Sanders played like five years, like three more years? You think he's at the clip he was one? doing? What? Uh, Barry, Sanders, Barry Sanders could have done everything. Barry Sanders could have finished his career with – the top rushing record all time, never broken, even by Emmett Smith, could have won a Super Bowl. Still not, still wouldn't have been higher than Gordy Howe. Oh, but he'd be at least two. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't. There's nobody on this list, not even Ty Cobb, that could have replaced Gordy Howe. Yeah. And, and my whole explanation was, despite statistics, championships, any guy won four Stanley Cups. So let's not, you know, I mean that that alone is is good enough to be number one. But to be labeled as Mister Hockey, who's great in whaler. the NHL, who's a great whaler. <laughs> well, the thing he's doing, and we could talk about this at a later date, but let's say Sanders played an entire career. That that team was awful. I picked. I, the, nothing I want you guys to know. I picked Detroit for a reason because I knew Detroit, especially being an original six team with other sports franchises that aren't as old as the Red Wings, would be a hockey heavy top right. five. Knowing no hockey would come into this, I'm actually like pretty certain that the Tigers were like the worst team of baseball of all time. Might be the best player was Richie Young, who batted like two. 70 with like 22 home runs. I mean, Ty Cobb batted. Also, Ty Cobb was excellent. Batted 370. <laughs> well, I said that like, He also played baseball at a time when like games. 17. Oh, you're talking about that specific Yeah, I'm talking team. about like the team that lost like 120 games. Oh, you're saying worst individual yeah. season performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I thought you were saying like worst. Listen, that guy worst, sucks ass. I thought you were saying worst franchise all time. Like that guy hit a triple in Philadelphia. It took him like an hour and a half to run the base. It's kind of like us now, Kyle. Yeah, I'm not saying <laughs> Hey, if I can guess Kendall's. Penis size? If, if this <laughs> seventeen inches. Wow. If this play is in Kendall's heat. top fifteen <laughs> favorite defensive plays of all time, that's flaccid. Mock has to take a shot. If I'm wrong, I'll take a shot. Is it Dontre Willis? No. Like... Dwayne Weiss robbing the home run to save Mark Burley's perfect game. Top fifteen favorite defensive plays of all time. Yeah. Top fifteen. I mean, it's amazing. That's so it's many. so good. <laughs> it's so but good. I had to say top fifteen because you got to figure. Kendall Kendall's favorite sport is football, followed very closely by baseball, and oh, that's about it. We were saying fifteen of all sports. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Listen, all, all time. That's still an amazing play. It's an awesome play. It is. And it's that, worth revisiting because it's an underappreciated play as well. I don't get erect anymore. I used to get erect a lot when I'd watch it. <laughs> I don't get erect anymore, but I definitely feel blood flow to the head. I get erect diabetes. Rowan, <laughs> Rowan, Rowan you mean Eric Rowan? <laughs> no, Eric. You might have a clot. <laughs> so I, I still haven't really figured it out. Phil, what are your favorite teams? I haven't really. Listen, I grew up in Stanford, Connecticut. So Gross. I was a 45 minute train ride from New York City. So I default New York everything. I'm a Yankees fan. I'm a Giants fan. I'm a Rangers fan. I'm a Knicks fan. I'm so sorry about that. Pretty Knicks. much in that order. Okay. <laughs> All right. Who do you like for NASCAR? Holy yes. shit. <laughs> Score update. So when we were doing the first hour of this. I, know. I, already, I already had the update. When we were doing, is it the same game? I think so. Senators? Yeah. Yeah. So when we were doing this earlier, like the Blackhawks and the Senators had puck drop. And it was a pretty high scoring first quarter. I think it finished three to two. Senators were on top. I haven't seen any score updates since because I've been doing this and taking phone calls and all that shit. So it said power play goal scored by Jonathan Taze, assisted by Patrick Kane, and Alex DeBrinkett. Blackhawks lead the Senators eight to five. Wow. The, the a lot of said, fucking goals. The update said there was nine goals scored in the first period. <laughs> was Could it you, that many? Yeah. Could Jesus. you imagine being at that game? Ugh. Yes. I mean, very jealous. I've been to the game like that. Well, I've, been six a game I've only been to the Sound Tigers, and you know, we know. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Hey, no, we'll do that. Uh, we are going, I'm going to have to do my best, because it's going to be all on me, and I'm a very forgetful person, especially when Pokemon Go is involved. But <laughs> I'm going to have to do my best. Don't make that face. It's Pokemon okay. Go is amazing. Okay. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. But anyway, right. it gets me walking. I've walked 37 miles last week because of it. <laughs> I'm I can't walk I'm waiting for softball season to get back in shape. I did. I can uh, walk five hundred. I take every all my lunch breaks at work. Every thirty minute lunch break, it's all paid. I park my car, and I walk for the. 30 you have minutes. to walk thirty minutes consistently, not stop, in what? order to be effective. Yeah. Because you walk for thirty. I'm not minutes. talking about it in a health standpoint. Oh, you, you just trying to. You were trying to. Well, here's. I, I'm pretty sure if I walk thirty seven miles in a week, it's pretty healthy. In a week. Yeah. Right. Would you disagree? 
I drove more than 37 miles today. <laughs> Breaking new Burke. Yeah, I drove 287 miles today. I probably got, I'm, I'm, not, I'm nowhere close. I, I drove got, from Prospect to North Haven to Plainfield to Simsbury. I think I got 141 today, I think. Yeah, but not on your own car. I got, not in my own car. Yeah, I got, exactly. I got seven feet. Kyle, you did not drive seven miles today. I walked seven feet. You drove me crazy <laughs> seven miles today. Well, I drove. So Souls and I, Souls and I, accompanied with his his brother. Uh, you know his brother, right, Kendall? You you do a good impersonation of him. Oh, of his brother. Yeah, his brother. Could you go ahead and give us uh, who's his favorite hockey? Yeah, player? what's his favorite hockey player? Can I get a number five? His uh, Kyle's brother. His favorite hockey player is uh, PK Subban. <laughs> oh. We're all going to be attending a Philadelphia 76ers game. Actually, Philadelphia 76ers versus uh, the Miami Heat. Dwayne Wade's last game. At the Wells Fargo Center. Secret Sixers trip. No, not a secret Sixers trip. <laughs> Bob, <laughs> Bob bailed out, so I got the ticket. Bob always bails. Let's buy these tickets. Yeah, no way. Actually, in, in about a month and a half, uh, Kyle and I collectively will be going to Philadelphia three times. <laughs> Excited for all of them. Yep. We're going to Philadelphia versus Miami you basketball know. game. Then we're going to, on March 31st, the third and final game of the opening weekend for the Phillies versus the Nationals or Braves? Braves. 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 And then Kendall will be uh, assisting be us there. on that trip. And then a week later, we'll be going to Church's Phillies. Chicken, right? Uh, twins. Phil- Phillies Twins with Red Baron and J Mark. Mark wanted to go to Czechoslovakia and jerk off some dudes so he can't go. And then in May, I'm probably yeah, bringing I gotta, Mark. I'm just booked up. I'm, I'm probably buying it. <laughs> what you should do is you should turn Pokemon Go on and jerk off with that hand. Get the, get the, get the miles walked. All right. Anyway, wow, did that really take us all that time? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Can I can I tell you I'm not entirely convinced on your top five for Detroit athletes. Yeah, cause we're, I mean you might as well because we're not going to get to the that that around the horn like. All right, for number five, I think I'd put Calvin Johnson. No. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Nope. I think he revolutionized the receiver position for modern football, and I think that's important. I think that des- is deserving of a top five. Um, Joe Lewis, I don't know if I consider him a Detroit athlete. He's from Detroit. He was born in Alabama. But he's but he was raised in Detroit. Yeah, I don't know if I consider him a Detroit athlete. I think if I was going to consider a Detroit athlete who was a boxer, I'd say Thomas Hearns. Thomas Hearns. He was, what, 61 and 5 in his career? I'd and say Thomas Hearns. Joe Lewis was champion for 37 Motor to City Madman. Joe Lewis was champion. Ted Nugent. Over- Joe Lewis Stevie is champion Y, number three, Barry Sanders, number two, and Gordie Howe, number one. I think that's how Detroit would do it. No, it's not. I don't. I mean, the the, the number one article I looked up was from the, from the Detroit newspaper, and they didn't have the, those three guys that you mentioned even in the top five. And boxing doesn't count for the top five. That's why I put Joe Lewis as an honorable mention because we don't focus on boxing here. I think boxing is important. But it's not our, but we don't focus on Especially it. Especially so, to Detroit. But it can't be on your top five because we don't focus on it It here. can be because... I don't, I don't care what Detroit focuses on. It's what we focus on. Oh. So, so fuck you, Detroit. We're going to tell you who to focus on. That's no, right. We're not telling Detroit who to focus on. It's just we focus on the four major sports. Not boxing. Not soccer. None of those sports. Except for hockey. So Thomas Hearns does not matter. Why is there toilet paper in front of me? Put to blow your in. nose with. I'm leaky. It's a dry heat. That's uh, for <laughs> that's for Kendall's uh, courtesy wipes. Yeah, it's about <laughs> time actually. Is it? Yeah. Ricky asked me too. She's like, "Why do you have to do a courtesy wipe? Who who's who's looking?" Got it. Thank you, Pete. Well, it's a it's a personal thing, not who's looking. I mean, it's your, it's your opinion. You're entitled to it. I'm not gonna tell you that your opinion's wrong. I think that Calvin Johnson. I think you're right in the fact that Calvin Johnson revolutionized the wide receiver position for football. With that being said, that means more to the NFL than it does to Detroit. Maybe now. Maybe not historically. We'll know in time. Ten years, we'll know. What are you going to know about Calvin Johnson ten years from now that you don't know now? He's not going to do anything else. How many receivers were able to do what he was able to do? I mean... You're right, Kyle. But but again, that goes to an NFL level, not a Detroit level. It does matter. To the NFL, not Detroit. When Barry Sanders retired, Unless he was Julio not Julio Jones and DeAndre Hopkins come sign with Detroit, it means nothing to Detroit. Cal- Cal- what Calvin Johnson did while he was part of Detroit was miraculous. What 
the receivers like Antonio Brown, DeAndre Hopkins, Julio Jones, Keenan Allen are doing right now has nothing to do with Detroit. It has to do with what he did for the NFL. The, the, none of those players meant anything to Detroit. Yeah. Well, when Barry Sanders retired, he wasn't the guy that everybody was like, oh, my God, he's the running back. I However, Barry 10 Sanders, years after the, the fact that he retired, like do, people are like, like wow, no horn. one's been able to do what Barry Sanders was able to do for 10 years. Maybe like he was the, the guy. Do you think... Who do you think is more likely to be considered the best at their position? Barry Sanders or Calvin Johnson? All time. Barry Sanders. Kyle? <laughs> Kyle! <laughs> Sorry, reading that question. Say that again. Who's more likely to be determined the best all time at their position? Calvin Johnson or Barry Sanders? Barry Sanders. Mark Sheen? I think Sanders. Yeah, it's not a question. It's definitely Barry Sanders. So, Calvin, so Calvin Johnson... Vitalized the NFL, not Detroit. Calvin Johnson, for me, didn't do anything except disappoint for Detroit. That well, that Lions team didn't do anything but disappoint for Detroit. Whereas you're going to put like Al Kaline, not even on the list, somebody who won a World Series, won a championship for the city, as well as still to this day to be regarded as the best defensive player in American League Baseball by multiple sources versus Calvin Johnson, who isn't, I don't think, would even be considered the number one receiver all time by any reliable NFL source. That's right. For Detroit, so, yes. So no, I, mean, I don't think he'd be considered the number one receiver in the NFL, ever. I can't speak on any of the, the hockey stuff. Phil is the only guy at this table that could, could speak on, you know, the Riddler's rankings because of the hockey, you know, you know influence. I think I, the point, he, I guess he's trying to make for a modern day NFL, you know, there's no discounting what Calvin Johnson did. The, I think the Calvin Johnson scheme, was a trendsetter for the NFL more than he was for I, Detroit. Okay. Well, I, I guess, I guess that's fair as well. Um, Why does Ty Cobb not get to make your list? Ty Cobb doesn't make my list because baseball wasn't as big, and that's to say as there wasn't as many teams as there are now, number one. Number two, there were no black players allowed in the league at the time that he played. That does factor in to me. Right, but Ty Cobb put baseball on the map for Detroit. Great. That's a big deal. Calvin Johnson didn't It's not the only deal. But Calvin Johnson didn't put football on the map for the Lions. No. Detroit was known for football well, well, well before. Calvin Johnson is, at, at best, the third most influential player in Lions history. At best. That still might make him the top five in Detroit history. So why didn't you put Bobby Lane? Bobby Lane won three NFL championships for the Detroit Lions. That's true. So why does he not make it? He didn't transcend football. I think Calvin Johnson did that in, but this in is, at least eight of the ten okay, and I, or eleven I, I, I years. I understand that he played. what you're saying. He transcended football, but this isn't the transcending football Riddler's rankings. This was Detroit athletes important to Detroit. Oh, I completely understand. Detroit. I completely understand. So then, why would why would Bobby Lane not make it over Calvin Johnson? He brought three championships for football to the city of Detroit, four championship appearances as a quarterback. Arguably the best quarterback Detroit's ever seen. The the exception would be Matthew Stafford. Outside of that, I mean, hold on. We're all talking about Joey Harrington. The hell was that noise? I don't know. So <laughs> for the city of Detroit only, specifically just the city of Detroit. <laughs> why is Calvin Johnson more important to the city of Detroit than Bobby? I was just Lane? concerned. A, he played his entire career for the Detroit Lions. B, I think. The modern day wide receiver is no, but, going to be but that's compared. NFL. Well, okay, but that's on. NFL. That's I not think Detroit. the modern day wide receiver is going to be compared to Calvin Johnson exclusively because of how good he was for how long that he was good. And yes, like Barry Sanders, he may have retired early, but I think he left his mark on the league as a whole, even today. I think even three, I, four I years after he's retired, you, people are still thing. talking about Calvin Johnson. But that's a league thing. Not Detroit. Yes, it is. How is it Detroit? He played in Detroit. But how is what impact did he leave on Detroit in terms of these receivers and today's NFL receivers are what are are all Calvin Johnson? Do Calvin you Johnson's... have Antonio Brown without Calvin Johnson? Yes. 
I yes, think so because they're, they're, they're not the same. They're not the same receiver. receiver. You don't know that. Name I, me the, who are the top five receivers in the NFL right well, now? Julio Jones, DeAndre Hopkins, Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham Jr., and then who would you put as five? It's it's interchangeable. Maybe Juju. Keenan Allen. Who? Juju. All right, you don't count. See, so, I th- I think to to Phil's like, point, you, but none of those guys are Calvin Johnson. The closest none one... of them are the extremely tall, extremely physical, extremely huge receiver that's going to go up in triple coverage and rip the ball out of their hands. So you're saying that Calvin Johnson is a generational type of player that people will remember for a lifetime? Yeah. Okay, so that would fit my top five list. But That's exactly the kind of person that the city would look for, is someone that you'll remember your entire life. I remember when I watched Calvin Johnson do this. I remember when Calvin Johnson was able to do this, and, even if it happened I, in a short okay. career. But people, so this that ty, Calvin Johnson requ- retired what six years ago, and people are saying, "I remember when Calvin Johnson did this." Sure. Ty Cobb played how long ago, and people are still saying, "I remember when Ty Cobb did this." Yeah, he's one of the original. He Hall put of baseball on I the map. That. He put baseball on the map for Detroit. Without Ty Cobb, baseball's not on the map for Detroit. Baseball was for... not the same sport. It doesn't matter, though. It, is. it doesn't yeah, it, matter. It, it certainly it does. Matter. No, it no you can't just say that it doesn't matter. It, it certainly does matter. So without Ty Cobb, baseball means nothing in Detroit until several years down the line when Al Kaline comes into the picture. That's not true at all. That's not exactly. That's not at all what I'm saying. All I'm saying is a that today, like, a person like Ty there's Cobb more influence some... on someone like Calvin Johnson than there is on someone like Ty Cobb. But that's today. You don't think that Ty yeah. Cobb had that same impact for generations on players after Ty Cobb? I do. Coming soon so... to the PPR Network to Phil and uh, <laughs> hey, Ted, this Paul is, Show. This has been great. You know, they, they got good back and forth. Hey, Tony A tuning in kind of late, but uh, thanks, Tony, for tuning in. <laughs> you guys are getting heated. Hey, listen. Makes good debate. I, I, I can't speak on this. These guys... <laughs> You can. It's Ty Cobb. It's baseball. Ty Cobb is maybe one of the 25 greatest players to ever play baseball. That doesn't make him, A, a good person, or B, a Detroit legend. <laughs> He's a Trump supporter. I mean, if you... He definitely would be if he were alive today. <laughs> I mean, if you're considered the 25 greatest players of all time, and you played the majority of your season with Detroit, I think that Are you mad, bro? No, I'm stating that... I think that's what it would be. It sounds a little salty. If Ty Cobb is the tw- is even the 25th best MLB player of all time, arguably the oldest sport in all of America, if he's the 25th best player of all time, played the majority of his time with Detroit, that would mean that he's more impactful for Detroit than Calvin Johnson. Not necessarily. Spec Shay. Calvin Johnson's not top 25 NFL player all time. I'm not even saying Spec that he is. Shay. I don't think he's even top 50, not even maybe top 100. He's probably top 100. Amazing but job. Low end. I, I wouldn't say that that's not something that the city of Detroit wouldn't love. Okay. They'd love a glass of water, too. You know what? They're they both would. pretty good. Mm. <laughs> How about that? Okay. Yeah. Both pretty good. Kyle needs a cheeseburger. And fries. <laughs> it's, a dry, <laughs> it's a dry heat. You're more <laughs> drunk than I am. Ooh. Kendall. Kyle, that is entirely speculative. <laughs> Kevin was not drunk like last week. I mean, it was false. Blah, 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 blah. Love you, man. I do love you. When he throws the love you in, that's it. Uh, either my house is burning just... down. <laughs> I, I don't know. Just ignore her. She's just kind of like the... I she's don't even correcting she's papers, Phil, is what she's doing. Anyway, that is not what's pretty happened. good. Got to uh, beer reviews? Wait, wait, do yep. I have to go over the bingo reviews? Yeah, it's oh, yeah. ten fifty-seven. What are you doing? We yeah. got these bingo charts. <laughs> Peter, he's trying to kick us out. You got three minutes. Wrap no, up. I'm not kicking you. No, no, I'm just saying. I mean, I don't know how long you're going. I didn't. I didn't do as what? well as I thought I was going to do. You did amazing. Based, based Phil. on the list that I had. Hold on, hold on. Rebecca, say it, please. Hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. How do you do? He did amazing. <sighs> Thanks. That's, that's, I was expecting a great job, honestly. Oh well, he did do a great job. <sighs> You know, Rebecca was our cheer team when we were building the studio. She kept saying, yeah. you guys are doing an amazing job. And she was, didn't you have a mask on that had like the dust in your nostrils? Yeah, I had that one that you got from work. Oh, the 95.9 <laughs> Fox thing. So, so what's next here? What are we doing? 
We got to oh, round up the bingo, right? Round up the bingo, see who kind of, who, who won, like what was Before what the beer review? Before this, the okay. beer review is like last before we hit our social yeah. media. Because plugs. that is on my bingo sheet. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. Oh. Then we could do beer reviews. <laughs> the Detroit Athletics doesn't even have Calvin I Johnson in the top know. 50 players all time for Detroit history. Phil, you're, you're a guest tonight. You're not working. Relax. Listen, it's on my sheet. <laughs> you're also on my team for bingo. <laughs> so you should be on my side I only. Understand. I understand. Motherfucker. I need you to take a day off, though. You're going to kill yourself. Really? You want to lead off beer reviews? No. All right. Not done yet. <laughs> I can. can. I, Go ahead. I'm Go ahead. Go ahead. A large beer. tube right. of cream there, Rebecca. All right. So I've had three separate beers tonight. No. Three separate. So I'd I beg mean, to differ. I mean, what would you beg to differ? What, what's there to, to... Why are you looking at him? Why Let's go. Him? Let's go. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Today of February 18th of 2019, I began with the Imperial Stout Trooper from New England Brewing Company, a Connecticut brewery. About $19.99 for a four-pack. The alcohol percentage, I think, differs, and Riddler can confirm this for me. I think it, over time it increases. Is that correct, or am I just making that up? No, it's correct. And so what What would you venture to guess this percentage was? You've had this for a while. What's the sound can? Uh, Paul, is that for when you and I went? Like no. three years ago? <laughs> no, that's older. Paul, is that a oh, mint wow. can? Hmm? Is that a mint can? A mint can? Yeah, the mint container? It's frost. Oh. Close enough. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> It's snus. It's not chew. I don't but it's the same concept, yeah. Snus is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't enjoy 1.5 liters of beer. Yeah. In the words of Phil, let's I mean, go. Come on, let's go. But the chew would be <laughs> really... What do you got, Kendall? What's what the that's where my pizza oh, yeah. all stretched out. I, I believe Kendall that. just fucked up the broadcast for anyone who has that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, Who gives it? Whatever. Uh, that's uh, where he fucked it up. Never mind. I don't know when it's from. Great job. So what would what, you guess? I mean... 14 and a half. 14 and a half. Excellent. Excellent. So it's about 14 and a half. I think it's like, a, I think it's normally like I'm a nine and a half down? percenter. That These one's five years journals. old. There's some things I didn't have completed. You guys have um, no priorities here about beer. No, we <laughs> want to give the people listening who don't care about the sports, don't get who care about the beer, we want to give them accurate explanation. So, very tasty. I enjoyed it. I've had it many times before. First time for me on the show. Uh, Dark beer, you know, it's a stout, obviously. Uh, the, the notes of the, the chocolate and coffee, whatever, so on and so forth. Um, it's not too heavy, which is nice. You feel you can have a couple. I don't recommend it because they'll, they'll knock you out. <laughs> um, but I enjoy it. You know, a lot of stouts would drink room temperature. I'd enjoy it cold as well. The second beer I had was a little juicy from Two Roads, about $16, 5.2%. Uh, Two Roads is a Connecticut brewery as well. Um, it's kind of like the little brother to Too Juicy. I enjoyed it a lot less. Uh, very easy drink, uh, but I, I guess I prefer the, the hoppiness to it. Soul Night, the only one showing love for Little Juicy. You know, it, yeah. It was good. I would drink it again, uh, but... It, That's not saying much, though. All right, well... Are you talking just, about just, Rebecca's bath water or this beer? She doesn't bathe. Oh. <laughs> Come on. And then the last beer I had uh, from Beard, uh, Stunner for the Win, 7%. It's a New England style IPA. Very good. Souls bought this on a whim uh, for the can, especially. You I gotta that? say, it was delicious. Uh, it was very tasty. So, uh, Shout out to Alex DeBrink at the cat. He's scoring a hat trick. Although I'm questioning the label because it's two men hugging with shirts off. That's a stone cold stunner. Yeah. It's all about wrestling. All right, move on. Sorry, I took all Souls. your freaking time. <laughs> so I let up with you like the juice? You like it, the juice? Did you like ah. the juice? Did we not get racial on here? That's a I natural accent. The juice is good, huh? I did not, but whatever. If I'm beard uh, brewing, yeah. From yep. Stonington, Connecticut, I give it a two and a half. It was good. I would have it again, but kind of whatever. Two and a half, really? Yeah, so like, it started the game, went four and a half, like went four and a third, yep, like two and like five runs. All right, moving along. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Then Not I about went, you, Pete. <laughs> then I went to the real ace of the team. Super duper double citra. Always fantastic. Fruity, hoppy, quacktastic. Then I went to the, then I also went to the stunner for the win. It blew the save, but wasn't bad. I would have it again, but wasn't terrible. Wasn't great. I gave it like a three. Chicago's best beer review yet. <laughs> 
Anybody find that racial a little bit? No, uh, Texas though. Toward the closers, yeah. Maxine? My first beer was the Heady Topper. I mean, if you've had it, you know it's fantastic. Um, Bullshit. It's a great, great IPA. Um, I believe it's about 8% alcohol, real citrusy. Um, I gave it five stars. I mean, it's one of my favorites. Five? Um, my, uh, my second beer was this uh, Stunner for the Win that Kyle bought. I was not as an, impressed with it. You I know came what? in. Sorry to interrupt. But salute to Peter for taking the product stock again. <laughs> but uh, I I gave it two and a half. I mean the the flavor kind of grew on me, but it it was kind of like bland. I don't I don't know. I didn't think it was that that impressive. Peter, but, all right. I'm a uh, a simple man, and I went with the uh, Sam Adams Oktoberfest, and I believe that is five point three percent alcohol because of my heart condition. So I had to drink that. It was kind of kind of refreshing. And then uh, Kyle gave me the um, two men hugging beer. The stunner. Kyle? Kyle? Yeah, that's me. Besides your racial slurs earlier, but um, that was you. The uh, the two men hugging. I'm okay with it. Uh, it's 2019. We can be okay with that. And that was how many percent? Seven uh, percent. But I'm not slurring like you three. <laughs> and that's what's uh, that's what's good. So private stock. Round the horn, real quick. I already did that five times. <laughs> Make it six. Uh, then it'll bring me back to my drug day, so I can't go. Um, so six that, is the trigger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, very good beers, and I like to keep it uh, Boston. Keep it Boston. Keep it Boston. So I'm not the science guy? Well, let's see. I started with the uh, New England Double Fuzzy, which I love. Where'd you get that? At New England Brewing. Okay. I'll start with a 4.6 for that. I went to a Treehouse Doppelganger, which is a just excellent double IPA. I feel like if you love double IPAs, this is this is the one to have. I'll give this a 4.8. And then I ended with a stout. I decided to end with a counterweight void. And I'll give this a 4.8 as well. I don't believe there's such a thing as a 5.0. Why? This is as close as it gets. You can't. Why can't you give it a five? Five is a perfect drink. It's like there's n- nothing better than that. Okay. It's your favorite. What is your favorite? The, the New England. This favorite. is close. Do you, do you have a I mean, favorite beer? Favorite. Of all time? Void oatmeal stout favorite is pretty close. Do you have a favorite beer of all time? I think your favorite beer would be a five point I think so. And then I don't if you find so. if you find something better, it knocks it down. Yeah. How Phil, you, Phil's but, never going to admit to a hundred. There's no such thing as a five point Yeah, that's, but it has to be. I I mean, like, have you seen Brady's wife? Well, then what's the point of being? <laughs> she's not a five point Um, she's like a three point eight. Um, Ew. Yeah, she is. I'd rather I bang Dak Prescott. I gave two four point eights and a four point six. I feel like I gave high scores. No, you did. I'm just saying, but like, you don't think that you like. Your most favorite beer in the world couldn't give you a 5.0. You no. got you to gotta have a bias. So then what's the point no. of having a scale if you can't yeah. reach the top? You, you, you got to have something There's to no argue with. no such thing as a perfect score. Ah, see, don't be a so then a 4.8 is, sport. is great, but it's not the best. It's very, very high. <laughs> but it's not the best. No. You, but the, but, there but has you would to never be, give anything a 5.0. That means that there's never been a beer Simply that's been the, the best. best beer you've there ever had. There is room for the 4.9. But so, even at four point nine, though, there's no, there's no room for the best beer you've ever had. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, so four right po- now there is not. So four point eight is. The you haven't drank enough beer scale. then. Four point eight. Haven't tried enough, beer, hey, hey. enough different beers. Well, I've only got one beer to review, <laughs> and I'm still reviewing it. You knocked the headphones off flying there, Paul. All right, it's cool. Um, why is it me? The wire's like right by your feet. You may have just kicked it out. That sounds like that sounds like bad engineering. <laughs> nah, I'm just messing with you, Peter. You're so handsome. You're so um, handsome. I thought face. it was just me. So I had the uh, <laughs> the zoop. Oh Jesus! Dick just knocked my Whoop. fucking head in the mic. I had the uh, Zuper Magic Wood Stout from Stone Brewing out of Berlin, Whoop. Germany. All right. Last minute. No. Um. So I, this beer is phenomenal. Um. It's a. Uh, Ten point one percent. It was thirty dollars, worth every penny. Uh, dark brown and black in color. Um, I got caramel notes on the nose, caramel and coffee notes. But I didn't get any caramel and coffee in the taste. I got a lot of like that nutty flavor from the pecans and the almonds. I also got toffee flavored, 
which kind of works from that like sweet but not too overly yeah, sweet yeah, yeah. flavor. Um, and then in the, the side notes, I just put it was very smooth and it was very velvety and decadent. Um, I would absolutely get it again. I gave it four and a half stars because it's not my favorite beer I've ever had. Um, very close though. Do you plan to keep the bottle for the the whatever purpose? Question is, do you plan to keep the bottle, Mister Cleanup Committee? You know, I I'd love to have a bottle like that, but I I just I want you to know this bottle was this was bottled in '07. Wow, and it was released in December. Wow, I mean that's very cool. I mean I don't know. Would I keep it? I'm, I'm a pack rat. Of course I'd keep it, but I just I seem to have a motif going. Hitler jizz in this bottle. The bottle was made in the forties. Oh, I see. Yeah, he jizzed in it. So. You know, I, you know, I support a lot of German things, but I don't, I don't support that. Oh, I do. Oh, well. With not that being said, not the same, not the same race that he was going after or anything like that. I see. I'm mostly just after Kyle. I got All you. Kyles. <laughs> we got to move this. Along. <laughs> well, I got somewhere to be. <laughs> All right then. So, uh, bingo sheets. Did anybody even get a bingo? Oh yeah. I have a... Uh, well, hold on. Did, did, did the Phil Pinot team get a bingo? I did, we did not. No bingo. Wow. Hey, we really? had six. <laughs> we were pretty close. You got like a full board now. <laughs> we're only missing a couple. You know what the thing is? Is like on theirs, like I saw one square. Mock takes a phone call. I thought that was a gimme. Did not uh, happen. You know what's tough? Marissa had today off. She's home. Oh, I didn't <laughs> think of that. We didn't get that. Oh, we didn't get square, uh, so let's see. Kyle takes private stock. We didn't get that. Yeah, yeah. but Kendall didn't play a hip hop song. Which oh, Kyle does. says, "Hear me out." Kyle says it a lot. Didn't happen. <laughs> didn't happen. I listened. Wow. No one brought up the diner, even without Jeff. That's amazing. Listened, listened. I listened intently. It didn't happen. Nobody farted. Nope. Well, Kendall didn't pee I, more than once. Didn't happen. Mock didn't say, "Here we go." Nope, he did not. Oh, wow. Mark and Kyle didn't get an argument. Eh, Kyle didn't debatable. fuck up and have to do his own solo private stock. No, wait, here's the deal. The farting one. No bad puns were made. Rebecca didn't have any private stock. I did. Stock. I made a bad pun, but I can't count that on myself. No, you can count that. No, you said you couldn't. No, you can count it. It doesn't give you a bingo, so you can count it. Um, <laughs> Kendall didn't. Kendall, you didn't have more than four beers. And you yeah, didn't do three. a law and order thing either. I yeah. yelled at him the other day. That's why I didn't have four beers. Was that on your thing? Was that was on ours. After the show, dun, I got dun, my fourth dun, beer. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I got to clean up first. Uh, Rebecca didn't drop anything. No. I, 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 I was sure. Looking. Rebecca, I was don't looking. you look at me like that. You fucking dropped something all the Did you drop something? Oh, yeah. Like four things. She, <laughs> well, she's <laughs> perpetually <laughs> dropping something. We, we had like six bingos. All right. So, uh, <laughs> let me, can I have a sheet? I'd like to be the, the announcer if that's okay. We're not we're not at a time constraint. We said eight ish to eleven ish. Dude, I am fucking hammered right now. <laughs> Why don't you have another wow, beer? they did have a lot. Holy <laughs> shit! So they got uh, so Kendall farts. Peter mentions Trump. Someone gets a special beer in, or gets a second beer in the first hour. Any team from Florida is mentioned. Marlins. We talked Marlins. We talked Heat. We did talk Dolphins too. We talked Tannehill. Dolphins. Kyle asks about McDonald's. Uh, yeah, mock that fidgets happens. with a straw. That's a given. Free space. <laughs> uh, anyone? Anyone burps on air? A I CT, think I did that a bunch. CT of times. beer on show. We had several. <laughs> uh, Kendall Almost tells exclusive. Kyle or Chris to talk into the mic. That one took some work. <laughs> mock single coughs off the mic. That was actually Kendall's doing. <laughs> mock hits Kyle. Rebecca mentions llama and alpacas. That was baited. Kyle it turns was. the hat backwards. Not by them. Paul makes True. an inappropriate... What an inappropriate joke did I make? You know... You said the Hitler thing at the end. <laughs> it's <laughs> funny because like, the first hour ended and Kyle's like, just cross that one out. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Kendall calls Rebecca Miss. That happened immediately. Yep. All right. How many did you guys get? Uh, I'm going to hand it to you. So she did... She was kind of in charge and she missed a lot of big stuff. Sorry, Paul. That was that was bad. Rebecca, Rita, Rita, can you get you that? You didn't help me. Rita, can you get it? Rita, I was Rita, listen, Rita, I'm trying to Rita, run Rita, the show Rita, here. Rita, 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 Rita. Sorry, Rita, that, was, that was a bad throw. So, no, is it right. safe to say you guys didn't have six? The Blackhawks finally won eight to seven. Oh my god! Yeah. So no, I don't. I don't. I don't know if we had right. six. So, based off what I'm seeing here, you guys won. Um, based off what I'm seeing here, they got one bingo. I thought we had two. We have two? Well, it's not six. Well, it's not six. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you had two. You had two. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Not that it matters. So, Kyle <laughs> called out for false uh, Harper signing. 
Yeah, damn. That was me. Uh, <laughs> a rock song is played during the break. Grossness of private stock is mentioned. Rebecca mentions her job. A hashtag GSWD shirt is present. Wow. There's two. Yeah, look at that. Did the five? Who had the five apparel things? We had it on our board. Well, hold on. I've got Blackhawks and Phillies. Kyle, Oklahoma City Thunder. What hat you got on? Sixers. And he's got an Astros hat. Yeah. That's I, five. I set it down. You guys should have crossed that one off. It's. Uh, ben Simmons' rookie joke wasn't made. Damn. More than five different... Oh, you did mark it off. Okay, good. F-word is used. Kendall tells someone to talk into the mic. And uh, bad pun is what Dennis Rodman mentioned. I would mentioned him several times. <laughs> Paul and Chris argument. Yep. I, awkward silence. There was Wait, a lot of those. How did you argue with Chris? No, I said anything exclusively involving Chris or Jeff was automatically a free Oh, uh, okay. So because without Chris... I got you. That, that's why I was... At. Yeah. That's right. You said that. So Phil was Chris. <laughs> and we got into enough arguments. So, so uh, Phil Irwin. congratulations to Toothpick Souls and Moxie Nwashmul on being the winners. Um, so I have three presents here in the bag. You may choose who gets them out of the losers, which is Mr. Pinho, Phil Nye the Science Guy, Rita, and the Red Baron. We didn't lose. You guys yeah, didn't did. win. We did not win. You guys didn't get a single bingo. You actually finished in last. I hate you. I know. Not really. We tried hard. We just didn't get a great... Remember, gentlemen, we do have microphones. So here's the problem. The boards are That's because really Kendall didn't play a hip-hop song. The boards are hard because like they go off mannerisms, but not every mannerism is Kendall worth always plays hip-hop. Like, Mock almost always takes a phone call. I didn't take President's Day into account. Like That's because you had the paper. You know what? Well, you Next should... time you do that, you got to have someone like Rebecca. You guys should have crossed this one off. No. The I problem is, is a lot of those things you guys read, so you didn't do it. Mentally. He's pissed. Whoa! No, I, no, I'm I'm the only one who I'm the only one who wrote these. No one else saw them. Yeah, but we read them as as we went, so we couldn't like so mentally. All right, Pete. Well, yeah, but like for you guys, like the chub hand sign, you guys would have never done that. Pete, <laughs> nope. didn't happen. Hey, you guys, oh, my so, so we get to hand out these three There's things. Three awards. You can hand them out all three to one person, two to one, one to one, whatever you guys want to do. Rebecca should get them all. Kendall, Kendall, Rebecca. Wow. All right, so we have for this the the fun. Yeah, first of all, what the fuck? Some you can eat. Now they're vodka shots, which is <laughs> vodka and tequila. <laughs> Get his face. No. So Rebecca, coming in. Now, hold on, I like to change one. Catch. Why? I think Phil it? deserves one. All right. Put them in the fridge. I, I mean, don't. I don't. Put them in the fridge. No, no. It's either do them now or I bring them home and they come back next week. No, no, I'll probably take it on the way home. Peter, do you want one? Vodka. I don't care. All right, we'll give one to Peter, one to Kendall. All right. I there we go. See, no, I want all reactions. Hold on, Kendall. All right, Peter's going first. <laughs> all right, Dude, Kendall. Yeah, you should go next, Kendall, because I want Rita's reaction next. Last. Uh, you have to do it. Boys and girls. <laughs> you haven't of drank all ages. anything. You're going to be fine. Drink it. Or... Check it out. Uh, if Rita doesn't drink it, she can't come on the show again. <laughs> Cal, you'll so it's a matter of fact. Disgusting. Look at Kendall. Never has a reaction. Rita, she's right. a drunk. Can you tell her that she has to drink it? Just have it. Talking about while, that. while we right. uh, while we settle this. Yeah, make sure to listen to the Peter Pino show Tuesdays and Wednesdays from seven thirty ish to ten thirty ish. You can check out all our shows on the PPRN app. And also, don't forget that PPRN is 24 7. So 24 7. Look, look all kinds of great music yes. provided by Peter Pino. Mixtape Saturdays as well. Yes. And then, Mock, where can they find us? Be sure to find us on Facebook and Instagram at Getting Sports with Drunk. Twitter is GSWD underscore four. Make sure to use the hashtag GSWD for all your daily uses, whether it's shitting on souls or pissing off Rita to take a shot. <laughs> Subscribe on Podbean, iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. And we're here on the PPRN Radio Network every Monday night from 8 to whenever we finish. <laughs> we, always say, right. we always say 11, but <laughs> it's never 11. We have a special show coming up. The NFL Draft. Yes, sir. Yeah, we got to get everybody on board for that. That's going to be a big show. We What's did up? not plug Phil, who is the producer of Chaz and AJ. Yes, when? thank you. Peter. Yes, thank you. And thank uh, you, Chaz and, and AJ can be heard every, mon- every uh, Monday through Friday uh, from uh, 5.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. And don't forget the special segment on Mondays with Street Pete. Smooth. 
Thank right. you. Right. No, and Phil does a really a ser- on a serious in, note. Phil does a really, really good job. Yeah. You don't know what Truly he does made. behind the scene. Um, are you ever on air, Pete? Uh, Phil? Yes. You are? He does yes. the sports oh, things yeah. every hour. So here's the thing. I, I try hour. my hardest to li- – I, I listen to Chaz and AJ every once in a while. Okay. I'm going to be honest with this. Fair enough. But also going on at the same time, Mark Henry does a podcast at 8 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know – like I know not everybody here listens or watched wrestling – but like I watched wrestling a lot growing oh, up. I Mark wasn't Henry's done. Mad man. Mark Henry is Mad fucking man. hilarious. Right, I wasn't done. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, right. my bad. So we want to thank Phil for coming in uh, to have thank someone you. like Phil thank in you, Phil. studio. If you watched him tonight, he was definitely in Phil mode. No, like, Phil was the MVP of the show because we we were missing two very. Uh, no, you could tell he's on a he's on a, a regular radio station. Because I was having every to be here. note. Thank you. He was writing down, and uh, we appreciate him having on her. Uh, Phil does a lot for myself, and Phil also has my back a lot. So I want to thank Phil for definitely being here. Thank it you. was an honor to have Phil in this studio because Phil is a legend right, in Pete. Connecticut. We got it. Thank you. We love you, Phil. Thank you, Pete. Well, yeah. and Phil was the real MVP of the show because we were missing two key components to our show in, in the mass, Chris Massey and Jay Mart, who are very argumentative in their own right, and... You know, Phil stepped in and and it brought the we're heat. not used to Phil having the Riddler. We're not used to having the Riddler be on the argument of the side. It's usually Kyle, <laughs> so it provided a different kind of spark to the show. So Phil, thank, thank you, you Phil. We, we you really it, appreciate guys. it. Hey, thank you very of much course, for Of course, as in all sports, no hard feelings. Of course, you want to come on a real show? You're a Green Bay Packers fan. You can go fuck yourself. I'll take that. You know, but until next week. Stay Unless, black, of course, you're, starting, <laughs> you're tuning in tomorrow from 7.30-ish to 10.30-ish for the Peter Finno Show. But until next I'll week, be there. I'm your hostess, Cupcake the Riddler. I'm Mac. Sheen Washable. Yep. I'm Toothpick Souls. Phil. Nye the Science Guy. Whatever I am, that's right. That's Hashtag Streepy. And I'm the Red Baron. <laughs> Stay black, y'all.